Hey everyone, before we get into my revealing discussion with the two lovebirds behind the fabulous documentary Moving Parts, I'd like to ask you to head on over to patreon.com slash craigandfriends and check out the reward tiers and see which one is right for you. There's hours and hours and hours of exclusive full-length shows awaiting you in Hot Dog Club. For five bucks a month, you get the bonus episodes. For seven, you get the bonus episodes and the listener questions episodes. And for $10 a month, well, for 10 bucks, you get all of those plus Movie Club. That's right, Movie Club. For less than the price of a cocktail, you get a steady stream of content and support the show at the same time. When you join, the entire Swollen Archive is immediately yours to enjoy. Already waiting for you there are hot episodes with Trixie, Laganja, Willem, Miss Jasmine Masters, Katya, Cherry and Sophie, Devin Green, Ms. Cracker, and more. And coming soon to Movie Club, two episodes with Peaches Christ, two with Willem, and one with Alaska. Not to mention the upcoming Listener Questions episodes with Miss Fame, Sophie Anderson, a bonus with Fifi O'Hara, and so very much more. Now that we've got that covered, let's get into the show. A Russian ballerina, stopping on a bureaucrat. A perky suburban housewife, who just got into scat. It's whimsically volatile. Sure plays a bean pinball. Boom, boom, we like a lot of the same rock musicals, it seems. Shock Treatment, Tommy. Oh my God, it doesn't get much better than Tina Turner in that movie. No, Tina Turner is the Acid Queen is one of the greatest scenes of all, especially that shot at the end where she, she's like, her teeth are rattling. Twitching, yeah. Yeah, Tina Turner's incredible in that. And she's so beautiful. Oh my God. She's stunning in it. Yeah, and Anne Margaret in that white outfit as well before the beans shoot yes. through the tv yeah so beautiful incredible ken russell is such an amazing director and when they go to that church and it's the Marilyn monroe church with eric clapton as the very yes. very drunk it, i mean shock treatment it's pretty far up there that is some of the best music i think i'm looking forward to next year when we can uh, lock down a date with jessica harper to Icon. actually do the shock treatment mo- movie club but you met her oh yeah she yeah, came yeah, over yeah. and yeah 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 because you told me how much you enjoyed the episode yeah <laughs> I can't believe that I it's such an icon. Oh, she was amazing and she was yeah. so fun. And then she offered to come back and do the shock treatment movie club. And I had hid the shock treatment movie poster because I didn't want to yeah. scare her. And then once I didn't, <laughs> I realized it wasn't going to scare her. I showed her the seven inch and the cassette and like all the different yeah. medias and the VHS and everything. <laughs> that is so cool. Well, because over on the bar there next to the shock treatment VHS and seven inch, there's a Suspiria mug. And I thought, I just hope she doesn't look around too carefully because she might get a little frightened. Did she see it? No. Well, yeah. afterwards, yes. Afterwards, yes, <laughs> yes. Because we were talking about the new Beverly. And she was like, oh, yeah, I'd like to do something with them someday. And I was like, I'm sure they'd be happy oh, to do man. that. Oh, man. If right? she hosted a Suspiria screening. That'd be wild. What yeah. about a double feature of Suspiria oh, and shock, shock treatment? treatment? No, you spussy booting around, Janie. <laughs> so good. So uh, let's get into your intro. Hi, Brad. I just came to tell you how fabulous, fabulous I, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Dear listeners, on this episode, we take a peek behind the modesty curtain on a powerful creative and personal partnership that together brought us Moving Parts, the feel-good holiday smash of the decade, a film that's out now on all worthwhile platforms, and a film about the wild ride a children's entertainer takes after discovering the power of the Lord and the process of moving the contents of a well-stocked automotive garage. (laughs) (laughs) Please join me in giving a warm, whimsically volatile welcome to David Silver and Trixie Mutt. Hello. Hello. Yay. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having us. Hey, it's my pleasure. I uh, just rewatched the film again last night, and man, the knee slap and laughs that uh, I have during that first 15 minutes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, how many it's times a laugh have, riot. How many times have you seen it? Twice. Okay, and you saw it at the uh, one of the premieres, right? That's right. Yeah, at Outfest. The, the outdoor showing? Yeah, that's right. The outdoor showing. Yeah, where you uh, had the attack of the bugs. Attacked by a moth. So yeah. 900 the, people So a attended. moth flew at me, and I was like, I'm fucking out of here. Yeah, and then your yeah. shoe got caught on stage. And yeah. all, for all those 900 people, you know, and the one who has the spotlight on them gets the fly attack. Yeah. I thought that was cruel. It was really cruel. <laughs> it was really fun, though. Remember that that helicopter kept flying by oh yeah that's right they suspected some suspicious activity yes and they wanted to know what was happening yeah yeah is that king kong climbing up? yeah <laughs> i probably looked like a diorama of dolly parton at the bowl i probably looked like that <laughs> okay that's actually what was flashing me back because i saw dolly at the bowl a year or two before that yes yeah, so I, I was at I, that same show oh okay that was a good one yeah the, cried the whole time when during yakety sacks that's that what set you off <laughs> yeah totally <laughs> cried the whole time had you seen dolly before that never 
Oh, okay. So this is a really major moment. Yeah, it just didn't occur to me that like, oh, we're going to see Dolly Parton, whatever, whatever, we have Dolly Parton tickets. And then I got there and saw the person. I was like, that's the real person. It that, can flip it just, me out sometimes, it, right? I was just like, that is the same person. <laughs> From the 80s, 90s, 60s, 70s. That's the same body. Right. That's what's weird to think. It is kind of strange to think that, isn't it? Because especially when she doesn't look the same over time, it really seems like it could be another person. Imagine if there was like three dollies. It's like Sharon. Old Sharon and Sharon now. Those sure. look like two different people. They do actually, yeah. Partic- Stone or needles? St- uh, needles. Although Stone or Needles is a great <laughs> title for something. Right? It's like a good yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. Or a game. Let's play Stone or Needles. We could actually play that game and have a bunch of trivia questions about certain aspects of the career, stone or needles. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> There'd be a lot of interesting crossover, I think, that we wouldn't I think expect. So. <laughs> so, David, you executive produced and produced the film. Yes. Yes, I did. Mm-hmm. And when did that process start? It started in towards the end of 2017, I mm-hmm. think. Because you had met already. Yes, we were already. <laughs> yes, we had met. <laughs> And I think it started kind of as a joke when the Gaga documentary came out. Oh, uh, sure. Trixie made a joke about doing a documentary called Six Foot Two. <laughs> <laughs> Which I still think it was the working name until the tone of the film ended up being like a little more sincere. Sure. Well, and then we kind of laughed about the, that. And then he was like, no, seriously, I want to do a documentary and call it Six Foot Two. And then months passed and months passed. And then I think I was in San Francisco for the Trixie and Katya's high school reunion with Peaches Christ. Yeah. And they were doing their meet and greet, and I was kind of off to the side hanging out with his manager. And we had never really... My old manager. ...talked for a long extended period of time. And I was like, well, actually, <laughs> she didn't know I was a filmmaker. And then she was like, oh, you should do the documentary. And I was like, yeah, that that's an interesting idea. But I was worried it might interfere with our relationship. Yeah, sure. So I had that conversation with Diana. And then about a month later, we were like having a date night. And it was the end of December... 2018 was about to begin. You were about to fly to New York to record One Stone. And you were like, I really wanted to do this. And now it's kind of too late. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, if you really want to do this, I can make it happen. Yeah. And six days later, we were in New York filming. Yeah, I really like that fast. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the the producer. Yeah. Magic. Yeah. And how did you put the crew together? Because it's one main... It was really just me and uh, Nick Zygoans, the director, uh, following Trixie around for nine months with a camera. Nick was my freshman year roommate at NYU. Mm Mm-hmm lived in New York. We were going to have to start in New York. I knew he was already there. We'd kind of been texting and he was like looking for something to kind of, you know, to do that he could really um, dig his feet into. And, and I, his claws too. Yeah. And uh, you know when you dig your feet into something? I do, yeah. That's how I feel about this podcast. <laughs> I, I really dug my feet yes. in. Yes. <laughs> um, anyway, uh I texted him after that that dinner, and I was like, I have this, do you want to make this film with me? I'll produce it, you can direct it. And yeah. he, uh, like I said, six days later, we were in the studio filming. Nick has a lot of television production credit, mm-hmm. and has a lot of like financial security around his television gig. So let's just say this, this wasn't like a cash grab for him. Yeah, yeah. And I think he was looking for something that he could get inspired by, and he really took to the idea quickly. And because he's not immersed in the drag world, Mm -hmm. he was a really good person to direct because he didn't take any information for granted. Right, which is an important thing. Sometimes people uh, forget that a lot of stuff is kind of inside baseball. Yeah. That it needs a little bit of explaining. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think he, like, kind of had to, like, look at the whole scope and figure out what he was going to talk about and collected information for a long time before he decided really what it was going to be about. Um, Was it shooting... All the time? Was it shooting in little spurts? We have over 100 hours of footage that we collected over nine months. Hmm. And it was kind of based on the events and the schedule of what was going on at the time. With how much I was touring, it's not like they could do all 60 cities in my American tour because it got really redundant. Yeah, sure. I mean, it'd be strange if they filmed every single show. Right. Yeah, it's like So we kind of picked and chose the best moments i think we were in the studio the whole time for one stone and shot mm-hmm. so much that first week uh, we have so much footage uh and then we kind of uh got a little bit more particular about uh when we picked up the camera nick would just be like what are you doing tomorrow uh-huh. and he would come to my house like eight in the morning or whatever and put a microphone on me and he would have he would follow me all the time but maybe not film all the time so he was still with me everywhere with his camera it just wasn't always on Okay, sure. But then if something started to kick off, maybe he would. He would tell me to go back, or or he would, you know, just. I mean, yeah, he would turn it on, but. And also, just the the 
you know, the production side of getting permission and being allowed to film certain places and the scheduling and the traveling. I mean, he came to Europe for the moving parts tour, I think for half of the tour. Mm -hmm. We were on the first three weeks of the US moving parts tour, I believe, mm -hmm. not the all 60 dates, obviously. So, um, plus drag con, Trixie and Katya making the record, winning drag race, my cosmetics campaign shoot really everywhere. Yeah. That's part of why we wanted to film so badly was because it wasn't even my idea. It was kind of like Diana and David's both idea. It was just a time where like so much of this is going to happen and so much of it is things that no one's ever done for drag queens. Mm -hmm. So at the base level, this would be really good to have a record of, and then given the events that transpired that well, really, sure. really none of us saw coming, it ended up having a lot more depth and being about more than just like wigs and, and, sequin fabric yeah it definitely becomes about friendship and also the how do you handle the sequin fabric of our friendships <laughs> yeah. that's right that's the new poster line right yeah yeah but i didn't know what it was going to be about to be honest i let david and nick do that i'm sitting on a crack so i'm gonna move oh. um i let david and nick do their thing they had conversations about the movie and about me without me in the room mm -hmm. which is and, probably good yeah and i never told them to turn the camera off i never asked them what was becoming important Sure, yeah. I just let them do their thing, because I don't know anything about movies. That's the best way to go into it, though, is the subject, right? Because if someone is a little too finicky about when people can have the camera on and off, you're not really going to get an authentic document. Oh, believe me, there's plenty of times where I wanted to, my instinct was to ask them to turn the camera off, but I never did. Give me a couple of uh, moments. Like, show, there was a part in the movie where I had a bad show, and I remember going back to the dressing room and just feeling like so over it because I did a bad job in my show. This is where you blank out on the lyrics? Yeah, I like had some blank spots that night, and also just, I just was off my comedy a little bit that night. And you know, I don't really feel like discussing it. I don't really feel like a camera looking at me after a bad show. Sure. The day that the Trixie and Katya show- um, Imploded. We, yeah, we had to halt production. Nick was there with the camera just to get fun B footage of us during the Trixie and Katya show. And there was fun stuff too. There was fun stuff, but they just came that day to get, you know, lighthearted B footage of a day of me on the job. So they weren't even covering the entire production of the show. This was just a happenstance that the oh, yeah. cameras were there. I mean, we knew the cameras were going to be there. Cause right, but I, I mean, they it, weren't there every day. No, what, yeah. I had it cleared with, you know, we cleared it with WOW and 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 Katya and with uh, Viceland. Everybody knew. Because on a set like that, where there's already like 10 cameras, it's like, what is one more? Who cares? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're on. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so we didn't know that that day was going to go to so south and we didn't know that those events were going to have such a butterfly effect on the next like six months. And about that day, how long into the day did things start to go that way? I don't even remember. We were there for two days, a day and a half, I guess. Mm -hmm. And the first day was rough and we wrapped early that day, didn't we? Like it was not happening. Well, also, like I said, we, you know, you only shoot so much. So I think we had left set by the end of the day and came back and picked you up. Mm -hmm. And then we went back the next day and they had locked the dressing room. And so we were in that room and you guys were just talking and that's where you're kind of talking about uh, your different styles of comedy. Oh yeah, the dressing room was locked. Yeah, for hours and hours. So you guys couldn't get ready. And um, it was just kind of spiraled from there. The day, as we see in the film, goes quite wrong. Yeah. And it's really harrowing to watch, even having known what happened, you know, having Brian tell me very, very, very clearly a couple times about that day when we were, you know, first starting the show, uh, watching it was really uh, shocking. And then the after effect of it as well. And one of my favorite moments in the movie, maybe my favorite, is the moment where you say, they're not going to want to see me without her because it's so stunning to see because at that point you're already you know trixie mattel like known you know but i'm so in your embarrassed head. that part of the movie but that's it, like my least favorite part <laughs> yeah but you know what though i think it's probably one of the most helpful parts to anyone who's not well, not I'm, worrying about whether or not they're going to be uh, successful without Katya. Yeah. But in, in just in we general, all worry about that. Even she worries about that. <laughs> that she does. She wrote me a letter the other day, a handwritten letter about that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, not to hit the nail on the head. I mean, but. When you watch the trailer, which is out now, you can see it on my YouTube channel. So if you just I want to skip the movie, you can actually see that just part watch of the trailer. That. Yeah. And then when you come <laughs> when you run into me at the club, you can cite one thing from the trailer and act like you saw it. Yeah, and really moving. Just yeah. say that. All I thought, good. I thought yeah. the parts were moving. Yeah. <laughs> um there's a part where I just go, you know, like nobody's gonna see me without her. And on one hand I'm grossed out because I'm like, uh, that's so like self serving in that moment to worry about how everything's gonna affect you. But then I'm also like, well, maybe like maybe 
other people in that situation would also have a selfish thought in that moment. And maybe that's what people relate to. Or maybe maybe it's because people don't think that I would have that kind of self-doubt. But I think it's a combination of those things. And I think primarily the last one. I'm like, that you yeah. wouldn't think that someone w in your position would have that kind of self-doubt because, you know, you're an actual, like we said earlier before, a top children's entertainer. Yeah. And um, to actually see someone who's very successful express that kind of doubt, I think is a very helpful to anyone who uh, has any kind of doubt. It was the equivalent of Lady Gaga um, crying when she had fibromyalgia. The outfits were a little different, but otherwise the emotional yeah. tone was very similar. There's a lot of, I've only watched the movie once with a group mm -hmm. um, in San Francisco. And I like sat in the far back alone in the dark in drag drinking wine, watching it because <laughs> it's not fun for me to watch that movie with other people because so many parts of it are, it's like people looking at naked pictures of you. It's so, sure. it's like, you know, when I, when I talk about myself, it's in jokes, it's in songs, it's in, it's in something, uh -huh. but this was somebody else. It kind of takes somebody else to like lay it out there and go, this is exactly who you are. And this is how everybody sees you. Mm -hmm. And it's a little shocking sometimes to, to get that reality check of like, you're not always the good person. You don't always have the answers, et cetera. You know? Yeah. But that, that, I think that is the sign of a good documentary. Did you have any concerns about how raw some of the stuff was that was being presented? Because you have, you know, the other relationship. Of course, yeah. I was hesitant to do this project initially because I thought it might affect our relationship. So I was kind of worried about the whole time about sure. um, how to be honest and show Brian and Trixie and also, um, you know, be take care of my partner as well. Yeah, sure. And that reminds me also of the opening credit, how it says, oh, <laughs> that's good. Oh, pardon me for a second. I forgot that this is all linked up. These linked devices. Yeah, it's a weird. Okay, I just hung up on them. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna call right Take back. the call. Gonna, <laughs> do it. Take yes. the call. Let's, yeah. Uh, have the sandwich. Um, the opening credits. How it's Brian Furcus in. Mm -hmm. So I, I like that distinction. Could you talk a little bit about that? Well, I think that this does a. The film does a good job. I'm gonna have to just take this really quickly. I'm very sorry. Hello? Hi, is this Craig? Yes, is this John? No, this is Brian. I'm a nurse at the Center West Hollywood. I'm calling you with test results. Do you have a minute? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, I do. Thank you. What's your date of birth? 21476. <laughs> okay, so you came in for testing on Wednesday the 20th? Yes, I did. We do have a positive for uh, rectal gonorrhea. Your urine and throat culture were negative, and syphilis was negative. Would you like to set up treatment? Uh, yes, I would. Thank you very much. How do I? Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry, you caught me at a funny moment. Uh, how? Um, yes. What's the next step, please? Okay, just setting up a treatment appointment. Do you have any allergies to any medications that you know of? Yes, uh, penicillin, amoxicillin, all of the cillins. <laughs> you can laugh on mic, it's okay. Laugh on mic. Oh my God. <laughs> What's that? Oh, it's okay. It's all right. They're, my friends are here. Yeah, it's it's okay. Let me ask you something. Uh, if this was included on a podcast, would you be okay with that? Uh, I'm sure they prefer not. Who? Um, who? who? Uh, it's your health, Craig. Meaning the center. Oh, okay. Um, all right. Well, I'll believe. We have appointments. We have appointments um, on Monday between 4.40 and 6.20 p.m. Uh, um, is, it, is there anything on Tuesday? Tuesday, um, do you prefer morning or earlier in the day or later in the day? Uh, is there something around two, uh, mid afternoon? 1.30? Yes, 1.30 is good. Okay, so we'll see you Tuesday the 26th at 1.30. No sex until after you've been treated, and please let any partners know it might be affected that you have gonorrhea. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Sure. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. If you're just tuning in. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever gonorrhea? Huh? Have you ever gonorrhea? Uh, uh, have, have I heard of it? Have you had it? N no, this is a new thing. I've had it 
once and I've had scares like three times. It's no big deal. They give you pills to take and they give you a shot in the butt. It's gone immediately. Really? Yes, it's nothing. Oh, thank God. Okay. Oh my God, it's nothing. Right? That was so funny. The only problem is the shot. The shot does give you diarrhea for a few days, but it goes away like nothing. Well, th happy Thanksgiving to me. Yeah, um, as, truly. Yeah, right now, <laughs> you this, better include that. You have to. I have to include it. Yeah, I have. To, I know I have to. We, you know, we're talking about being candid. Yeah, and frank. exactly. I think, you know how I my philosophy on the show is that you know. With I'm not laughing that you got tested. I'm not laughing that you got an STI. I'm laughing that they called back twice in a row <laughs> I know, and because then... the urgency, because <laughs> what's going on in your anus is so pressing <laughs> that you need to pick up. And uh, basically, so, and this might be uh, the result of the first uh, anal sex I had. I was just going to say, you just turned gay eight minutes ago <laughs> and you already have creepy crawlies. Welcome to the club. <laughs> you turned, you turned gay you. five minutes ago. <laughs> Ah. Well, I can't. If you guys at Hot Dog Club are wondering what happens to your money, uh, <laughs> Craig is taking it down to the the clinic. <laughs> well, thankfully it's the free clinic. Oh, great, perfect. Yeah, I'd like to give a shout out to even though Brian on the phone there said that they might not prefer it. I think this is a a very good PSA to people. I agree. Or, or a very convincing prank. Well, maybe. Wait, wait. Where is McCook? <laughs> <laughs> right, so he, he did say Brian, not a very good, not a very good cover. Yeah, no, I know. Well, he said he didn't want to be on the show anymore, but he does. But like this, <laughs> this is, this yeah. is what. <laughs> yeah. So, and I, uh, yeah, I just uh, on, honestly, it was about a week to ten days ago where it was the first uh, receptive anal sex situation uh, with a fella. How and was it? It was really good. I really, really enjoyed it. It was fully versed both ways uh, with the person. You actually know the person. <laughs> was it Cracker? <laughs> no, it wasn't. Although I'd like that to happen. Yeah. Um, I can tell you who it is. I probably can't, I can't leave that in for the show. Oh, though. who is it? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> very handsome. <laughs> oh, work. He's a very cute guy. Very cute. Very cute. But apparently needs to know something yeah that uh well because can you get that from other f i mean you need to have someone in well although also you need to have sex fluids in you yeah okay well the, here's the thing there was a condom involved but it's so is it oh, only to think of is it only know. gonorrhea in your ass or can you get it from other places and then it's detected in your ass you could get it from like anything i mean like so may, i may have had this for a while no like he could like no you can get it from spit no. even oh right? okay yeah. okay then like you can get it there in your mouth go. and then if he has it in his mouth, like oral gonorrhea, he can pass, you know, like it could be anything. Gotcha. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to cancel the sex date I have it's on Tuesday. So easy sure to get gonorrhea. Yeah, it is wow. so easy to get gonorrhea. Okay. Well, listen. Don't, don't care at all. I, I mean, it's yeah. so normal. Well, I'm happy to. Uh... <laughs> when I when I think I have gonorrhea, it ends up being just sort of like, it's like a parking ticket. Okay. God sure. damn it. Right. Damn it. I got to go get down. me every time. I, I left yeah. my asshole out here for two seconds. <laughs> double parked. You know, I got to go take care of this. I'll be back in a little while. Yeah. Right. Okay. So I guess I'm canceling Tuesday night's plans. I got, and, uh, I got crabs from a hotel once. Oh, really? From a, that's how easy STIs are. I mean, they'll find you. And by the way, it's the slutty friend who never gets anything. It's the Pollyanna like me who gets it from like a pillowcase, <laughs> like full, full right. crabs. Right. Right. Yeah. Anyway, we don't really get any diseases in the movie, but. Yeah, no, but maybe on the next one. Yeah, the sequel. Yeah. Does yeah. the movie still talk about pushing a load out of my ass? No. Oh, oh that's too bad. Bummer. There was a scene that we shot the first week in, in the studio where I had uh, Brian FaceTime with Jinx, and they were talking about, because Jinx has a documentary, Drag Becomes Her. Oh, yeah, right. Um, so we were kind of talking about the process of making a documentary, and she was like, well, you know, it's just important to be... Um, you know, like let them see everything and, you know, be open. And you made a joke about, uh, they just filmed me pushing a load out of my ass in the shower. And she said, how long have they been there? Yeah. It was a great <laughs> scene and it was in, in there for a while. She's still in the movie. Cause she's my favorite drag queen. She's great. And uh, then you have that nice chat backstage and then she roasts you. Yeah. 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 There's this great shot of her putting on her lashes. It's kind of like the Dorian Corey moment of the movie when she's like, we were talking about winning or something or, or being a winner and she was like yeah it doesn't matter that she said something like well you win and then they got a whole new season ready yeah. to go right away and i yeah. was sandwiched in between two of the biggest winners so yeah. it's a yeah jinx is lamenting yeah. being a, a, a blackout has been yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but back to the 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 big upset in the beginning of the film that leads us into a, a number of thorny subjects that you addressed a minute ago you felt bad about expressing a quote unquote self-serving emotion right but the thing is about a situation like that is you know you're going through it because you're wrestling with all these things it's a natural thing to think what's going to happen to me and my show and you cycle through these things rather rapidly because that's how i think it goes in your head you're worried about 
Katya, uh, obviously. But then you're thinking, what about me? What am I going to do? And then you feel guilty for having those feelings. Right. That's pretty much what it was. It just feels like, wow, somebody's going through something I can't even really conceive of. Because unless you're an addict, you have no idea. But then again, that's always how we operate. Like health or no health. Yeah. I'm usually the one being like, how can we stack some more quarters on top of this deal? You know, like how can we sweeten it? How can we make more money? What's a yeah. good thing for us? But that's a positive thing. Yeah. You know, and you said things to me about things that I might want to consider doing. Unsolicited and, business advice. That's yeah, what I do best. Yeah, but I love that. I, I <laughs> Truly. Actually, you know, I've mentioned, David, how many times have I mentioned to you about how touching and uh, supportive I feel that yeah. that is? Yeah. It, it is. I'm, I miss Vita Bohem when she's like, and stop a 20% 20, 20 surcharge and all these paid for. <laughs> that's me. Well, well, I mean, when that happened, they had come back to filming because Viceland had ordered six more episodes. Okay, yeah. So also they hadn't, they were able to film, I think, one episode of the six episodes before that happened. And then what do you do? You know? Yeah, right, sure. So there was a lot of pressure then added to Trixie to, are we going to get a replacement? What's going to happen? Like, the when you people are like that. Yeah. You actually owe, think of right. episodes like somebody buying something. You owe a TV network money basically you yeah. owe them episodes yeah exactly so then it was like well we have to we still owe five episodes of television you have to make these we happen have to make them yeah and luckily at the time bob the drag queen was in town doing a web series and i had to call him and beg him like can you not do your web series and come film for me with me for like a week mm -hmm. thank god he did yeah because uh, sometimes people don't realize when there's a replacement or there's a change in the lineup or something it's out of your control. Yeah and it went from um it went from us being like wow they want six more episodes that maybe that means there's some potential for this to be, have a season 2 and get extended. It went from that to like just trying to deliver five episodes and with with your sanity intact. Cuz I also had to go back to work the next day with the same camera people, the same directors, the same writers, the same team without her right so it's also like we're all pretending like something crazy is not happening yeah because we yeah. all have to we all have to and we all have to do comedy it's not like we get to come in and uh you know uh sure wait feelings. wait tables we have to come in and do funny shit did you talk about it at all did you talk about the weirdness or did you just like have to uh I seal joke, that off yeah I, was, I joked about it and i was the only one who would joke about it everyone else would just be like oh that's you know oh that's just, you know best to, the best to her and i'm like i would be the only one who's like we have to address the elf in the room here like we called in bob too like which is funny because we called in a sober person <laughs> 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 but it was awful it was um really hard and a bummer and then on a personal level, one of the most important friendships you have is like, not just up in the air, it didn't feel like it was going to come back down ever. Because I don't know, Brian even hasn't been that open about like what his real timeline was during that time, how much he didn't talk to certain people at that time, how right. much people sometimes didn't even know where he was. Sure. So there was, it was like a network of, not only are we not friends, it's like, has anybody heard from him? Yeah, right. Is, is, is anybody like, you know, there's a lot more than just like my career, the t television episodes I owe. It was like more than that, more, more actual oh, yeah. concern. Yeah. I mean, the focus of the film is still about, you know, kind of like the golden age of drag and one of the, it's about me getting to do all these things in this, this snapshot of time in the world, you know, the big tours and winning. Because, yeah. All, yeah. All kinds of stuff or like putting out my second record, touring the world. It really is about, the, the movie really does blow your mind with how much is available to someone who wears a wig for a living. Sure. It is really crazy. And that still is the focus. Yeah. Because the, the, the Brian and Brian friendship dynamic, it became accidentally important. Right. The same way when you have any sort of personal trauma, it seems to sort of trickle into everything. Right. It trickles. It's like yeah. when you're freshly broken up with someone. Yes. It affects everything. It your does. Your energy level affects your work. It affects the way you sleep. It affects everything. The, so Yeah, the prism with which you look through at the world. Yeah, Inevitably, it mattered more than, believe me, we didn't intend to capture or like get someone. That just became important. No, of course not. Of course not. But it would be, it would be irresponsible for David and Nick to make a movie that didn't show it how it was. And all of that footage is really, really how it was. Well, and I also think that it's helpful to people. Hello, part I hope people so. not talking about that stuff is part of the problem. It is part of the problem because once people can see, especially a figure that they admire, going through something like that, or and also with you going through what it feels like to go through something like that with a friend. Yeah, I mean, I grew up with you know like alcoholic you know parents and stuff like that, but 
casual northeast Wisconsin like drunken dad is different than like you know Hollywood crossdresser uppers. <laughs> that is different. It's very it, different. It is different. Yeah, it is different. And also because it's a friend, and somehow that's different than when it's a family member. Yeah, totally. Well, I think you know we set out to make a, a real film. And, you know, you pick up a camera and you start shooting and you don't know what's going to happen. But I think that there's real, like, humanity to the film. And it's not a fluff piece. It's not the Justin Bieber experience. It's... <laughs> but I wish it was. Um, <laughs> Next one. I yeah. think very raw and intimate. And um, some moments are a little intense. And there's a lot of highs and lows, which I think is, you know, what makes the film work. And why people seem to be moved by it. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it ain't a, it's not a competition, but all the mother drag documentaries ain't got shit on this one. Because this one is so much more, like, real. It's got more auto harp than most of them, too. It sure does. <laughs> yes, it does. And also, credit, when you guys do watch the movie, which comes out December 7th. Third. <laughs> comes out December 3rd. I should um, have a clean bill of health by then, by the way. Yeah, so perfect. I'm we'll celebrate. <laughs> um, reflect on the fact that it's one camera. The whole thing's one, it is. Nick, one person. The, the, some of the stage shows we had someone to come in and get uh, a second camera come in, but it was Nick. One camera. And he did the sound too, if I'm not mistaken. He was wearing headphones. Him and I with, did the yeah. sound. Um, if it wasn't him, it was me. And then it was really him. And well, one of the reasons I immediately went to him was because we went to film school together and I knew he had a really like artful eye. Yeah. And the film looks so beautiful. It does. He did such a great job. And it's really impressive that it's one camera. And our editor, James Kodianis, did a killer job. In fact, uh, the BB is a Harabonet documentary, I believe, just hired him as their oh, editor. Oh, terrific. So yeah. he killed it. Nick killed it. They really did an incredible job. It is impressive that it's uh, only one camera. That's crazy to it think is. about. Because when you watch it, there's so many angles, and so it, it seems like the cameras are everywhere. He was running around. <laughs> he really was. Yeah. Well, and also the the music in the film is all done. It, I would say ninety percent of it is done by Trixie here. Mm. Yeah, wrote it and played it all. Oh. And a few moments, Nick actually did the music. Uh, so they, they both did the music. Uh, Does Nick do costuming as well? Like what else? Yeah, did he, <laughs> he, can, he can do everything. Um, but yeah, most of the soundtrack, the the score is Trixie. Yeah, um, there's a and there'll be a soundtrack. Oh, yeah, good. we just recorded an acoustic soundtrack. It's um, there's acoustic versions of some of my songs that people already know. There's versions of it, like there's a version of Moving Parts that's on guitar, which it's always a harp song. Mm -hmm. So it's not, and there's covers. I've never done covers till now. Oh. Um, What's there's the a covers? Dolly cover. There's oh, a Dolly yeah. cover. the one that closes the film. No, no, that's a Keep on the Sunny Side, oh, which yes, is on the right. soundtrack. Yeah. Keep on the Sunny Side on the soundtrack. I'll cut that out because I can't be wrong on the show. Well, no, in the <laughs> in the festival run of the film backwoods barbie plays in the uh, all-stars press junket oh, part okay. of the film yeah but it was too pricey to keep in Just the film expensive yeah how expensive they Wasn't wanted like sixty thousand dollars and this is an independent film so like <laughs> they is... wanted a lot of money um so we I, now it's uh, uh, Mama Don't Make Me Put On The Dress Again, which works oh, just as right. well. Yeah. But we have, um, for the soundtrack, we have Trixie do a cover of Backwoods Barbie. Yeah, there's brand new versions of all the songs. Um, and there's even there, original ones written for the movie. There's this one song that you were writing on the Moving Parts tour and you kept playing it and it had this beautiful melody. It's the song in the trailer mm. that people keep asking about. So also, if you only see the trailer, reference that. Yeah, well, people keep are like, yeah. what is that song? And it was the song you were writing and you kind of like you know left it there and i kept being like you need to finish that song it's so beautiful it's one of my favorite songs you've ever written mm -hmm. it's called heavy crown and it's on the soundtrack and i i can't stop listening to it well i was writing it uh you know on tour when the katya thing was not doing so good and it was kind of about that it was kind of about um it's kind of about like how foolish you should feel if you think that something good happening to you means that everything's gonna be fine like okay yeah. something great happening to you like it's a little immature to not know that that means 10 other things are going to fall apart in front of you. You kind of have a guarded optimism in general. Yeah. With things, right? Moving parts yeah. is about that, you yeah. know? And so that song is sort of about that. And I didn't really, I, I kind of dropped it because by the time me and Brian were doing better, I was just like, well, that song's kind of over it, but it works in the movie. Yeah. And also I think the message still holds. It doesn't have to be um, specifically about what's going on currently. 
on All Stars, you won like a three night stay in Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. And the moving parts Florida. tour in America <laughs> was starting in Fort Lauderdale. So we kind of cashed that in and went to Fort Lauderdale for a few days before yeah. the tour started with Nick. And there's a scene in the film where you're on the balcony at night playing the song and it was so beautiful and we put it in the movie and I, you have to license all the music. And I went to you, I was like, who sings this song? And you were like, I wrote that song when I was 18 years old. Did you give uh, a decent break on the publishing or did you really squeeze them on the... I'm trying to take him for everything he's got. Yeah, no, that's good. He's got a sweet action figure collection. I'm trying to take half. Yeah. yeah. Um, Not anymore, though. That song song is on the soundtrack and in the film it's called Hello, Goodbye, Hello. Hello, Goodbye, Hello. That's one of the best songs I've ever written. I wrote it when I was 19 because my boyfriend broke up with me, moved back to Minnesota, and I was devastated. And 19-year-old me apparently is capable of writing something that's better than most of what I can come up with now. That's (laughs) such a good song. It's incredible. And uh, and I forgot about it for like 10 years. Yeah. And I was randomly playing it while we were filming. Mm-hmm. Totally. I couldn't believe I even remembered the words. One also really matches the mood of the film and the story and, you know, hello, goodbye, hello of, you know, losing someone and then having them come yeah. back. It is nice when you see Brian build as Brian McCook at the end, not mm-hmm. Katya, which is another nice little distinction. Yes. And what show is that again that he was backstage? That was the LA show, the Will Turn. Oh, that's the right, Will it's Turn, the Will Turn. Yeah. yeah, was that the first time that you'd hung out, or had you hung out uh, before that? Not really. We hadn't really hung out. We'd had some phone calls. I mean, you can tell Brian's backstage at the show, and you can tell it's still a little weird. You know, we went for a walk sometime later. Like we were doing Runyon Canyon, and this was right when he was getting back on his feet and seeing people again. And you know, we had like an hour and a half walk of small talk. Yeah, and then he just turns to me and was like, "I'm so sorry." He's like, yeah. and the reason I'm not apologizing is because I think it's insulting like to apologize for something. I know I can't like, it's not going to make it better. Mm-hmm. So he was like, you know, that's why he's, that's why it's when you've kind of like had such a, a friendship problem, it's sort of, you, you can't really apologize because it's to apologize to suggest that you can make it all better right away, which is why he was like, well, what do you do or say? But you do have to do or say something. Yeah, and he and he did, and I mean, I never held it against him. Right. It is kind of like the mark of a psychopath. If somebody's going through something that serious and you think that they are somehow targeting you. Right, it's, or it's all about you it's and not how about they, you. Yeah, no. Whatever however it affects you, that's you know, drop in a bucket compared to what they're going through, really. <laughs> no, it really is. Yeah. I mean, so clearly he, he was having the worst time. He you know, he's yeah. been very like I can't believe how good of a friend you were and you were very, you know, he'll talk about interviews and be like, he's very compassionate how he just like was forgiving. And I'm like, well, I'm also reasonable. Anybody with a reasoning mind would be like, this person doesn't want to be a monster right now. No, of course not. They're yeah. stuck on this ride too. Yeah. Like you said, I'm sure he doesn't want to be on this roller coaster that he's Yeah. On. I think I said that in the movie. Yeah. You know, yeah. There, there's a part where I get sort of a bunch of sort of aggressive, like kind of purposely cruel texts from him. And mm-hmm. at the time it's very confusing. Sure. And when we watched the movie together with Brian, he was like, oh my God, I don't even remember that, you know? Yeah, well, I imagine. But again, perspective. In the moment, you can see me on camera get kind of mad, but watching it back, I'm like, I should have known this was obviously not what somebody felt, but it just feels real in the moment. That's the trouble with that stuff, though. You can logically say, this isn't about me. Uh, This isn't quote unquote real, but you can't help the reaction that it stirs up inside of you. And I was, you know? uh, Yeah, I mean, I love him so much. I mean, it was, I was like the Katya apologist, like the whole time of like, I've, I always benefited the doubt him and I always believe in him and I always excuse him. And there's obviously footage of me maybe that day not feeling so great about it, but. Well, listen, but that's understandable though too. Overall, if you're really somebody's friend, stay focused on them. It's really about, they are the ones in trouble. The trickle down effect you're experiencing as a walk in the park. Yeah. You know, did you struggle though at moments of feeling like, oh, he really doesn't like me? Did you ever have those kind of feelings? Like maybe he doesn't really like me, kind of like insecure. Maybe not he doesn't like me, but you can definitely see me struggle with like what's going to happen to my. Will anybody want to see me perform if I don't? It's not somehow part of this duo that people like. Yeah. You can see me get really worried about that. And looking back, that's so, f- it's weird to watch now knowing what I know now, but I was also, you know, trying to win this big TV show and under a lot of scrutiny for that. I was putting out my second album, which trying to follow the success of the first, there was a lot of like things in the air that were like, is it going to work or not? What's going to happen? There's a lot of pressure. And I was about to do this, you know, how many cities, over a hundred cities of moving parts tour last year. I had to worry about selling all those tickets. And it was like, 
you know, there's a lot to worry about, yeah. more than I'd ever had to worry about at the time. And no matter how meteoric the rise, say, when you're on that trajectory, any little bump in the road can seem incredibly massive, potentially devastating. Yeah. You know, so of course that can stir up any kind of uh, either insecurity or worry about your future, which I'm sure was also mixed with the interpersonal concerns as well. Yeah, it just makes it hard to do your work. And when you have yeah. a lot of responsibility, when you have to perform every day for like a thousand plus people. And again, like, comedy. Yeah, and comedy or like anything rocks the boat because you have a lot on your plate already. But I, still a lot of the movie is about, um, it's really a more about succeeding despite, and it's really more about um, the sentiment of the song is like that growing up is sort of about learning to take the good and the bad. That's sort mm -hmm. of like, you're never gonna find happiness until you learn to expect bad things with good things. Do and you know it, when you started to look at the world that way do you think you always did or do you think no it, it i remember was exactly when i remember like it was like two and a half years ago and it was i was writing moving parts the song at the time and it was a time where something bad happened i don't remember what it was but you got a call from the clinic <laughs> no, nothing that bad <laughs> no 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 what is that bad right i yeah. think i wrote moving parts for two birds and i think i just didn't use it but okay. i think it was at a time where something bad happened and when something bad happens, you almost feel stupid for like um, thinking that things will work out. You're just like, I'm yeah, such an yeah. idiot. Yeah. Like you, that like, can be my reaction too. It's a, it's a sort of self punishing. Yeah. Thing. Like you feel stupid that you thought the universe was going to give you a break. And I guess growing up and being happy is about it's the Joni Mitchell both sides now. You know, that's that's yeah. the only way you'll ever be happy is if you expect good and bad and know that they exist. At the same time, it's the the Star Wars, the Force. He's never seen a Star Wars. I've movie. never seen a Star Wars. Oh wow! Movie. But yet, yet you can reference yeah. it very well. I uh, saw Freddie Prince Jr. talk about it in an interview. That's all you really need to do. Again, <laughs> so hopefully, if Freddie Prince will do an interview about moving parts, and then you can skip watching it totally and just <laughs> have an opinion about it. Yeah, totally. But I'm really proud of that song, and I'm proud of that that movie. And um, the two, I think, have a similar message. Well, that's why the original title wasn't moving parts. We were kind of like working off the six foot two thing, mm -hmm. which still would have been a great. It's yeah, I mean, that, you know, drag kind of comes from like referencing other other pop culture moments. Sure, and there is actually uh, the last shot of the film is a direct kind of reference to Five Foot Two uh, with the lifting up of Trixie into the air. Right. Um, and well, there the three specific references. There were three documentaries we watched before we made the film: Gaga's documentary, Madonna's Truth or Dare documentary, and Bob Dylan's Don't Look Back. Sure, and there are three little callbacks in the film for each of those. Films. What's the Don't Look Back reference? Because I haven't seen that movie in a long time. Just the opening scroll of all of featuring all of the drag queens. Oh, that's right. Yeah. But that was like the original like verite uh, tour doc. Yeah. So that heavily influenced the film. And then uh, your phone call with your mom is kind of the Madonna truth or dare moment oh, where she's uh, yeah. on the phone with her father inviting him to come see her. That's right. Uh, eating soup this. in the hotel room. As you likely know, I don't drink, but I love to have a fully stocked bar for guests who do, and a fab company called Bright Cellars has been keeping my bar stocked with top tier wine, which they deliver monthly, right to the apartment door. They have a unique method for you to select and order wines you or your guests will love. From the information gleaned via their fun and easy online questionnaire, their wine concierges select varieties that will thrill the taste buds of anyone who answers their questions honestly. And really, why should you give them the runaround? It's really easy to get stuck in a rut when picking something up at the store, but Bright Sellers will rescue you from that rut and save you a lot of time wandering the aisles. So far, podcasts and nighttime guests have enjoyed the Sun Shower Riesling, the Jetbird Red Blend, the Gladiolus Chardonnay, and oh, how they went wild for the Cactus Park Chardonnay. And Bright Sellers, well, they're giving whimsically volatile listeners a fabulous discount. 50% off your first Bright Cellars box. So take the quiz to see your wine matches and get 50% off your first shipment at brightcellars.com slash WV. That's B-R-I-G-H-T-C-E-L-L-A-R-S dot com slash WV. I guess what I wanted out of it was to get like, um, you know, like in Scream 3, most iconic <laughs> movie ever. You still haven't seen it, have you? No, but I promise it's to the watch worst that. one. It's the worst one. But there's one. a part well, where this They're all great, but that's the worst this one. This actress is supposed to play Sydney, and Sydney catches her stealing some props, like a, a ghost face mask. Uh huh. 
and she's like, you know, I want a talent search competition to play you. And she's basically like, I know I might never be in Hollywood again. So I'm just taking a souvenir. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Keep going. So <laughs> when, to me, it was like, well, you know, I, this really could be the only world tour or the only time I'm on TV again, or the last album I get to make. And I'm always one, like one, like one eye on the door. Yeah. See, I want to ask you about that. Like, I'm always I, ready for my ride to end and be like, would I be satisfied with it? Would it be happy? Yes. And so this movie was like, well, maybe this will be like at least a record that this all happened. And so when you're sitting at home, um, working at the gas station, you can come back home or rather the automotive station that you're setting up throughout the film, uh, that you can sit and watch this and go, you know what? I did that once. Totally. And when I do watch the movie, which, you know, I've only, I've probably seen the whole thing maybe five times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not my favorite thing to watch because really, I wonder, because, you know, Katya loves to put it on. <laughs> oh, <it's hot. laughs> she's straightened up around the house. Oh, yeah, exactly. Having some friends over, you know, for some soda. <laughs> but I mean, anybody who's remotely a fan of either of us. Yeah. When I put myself in the mindset of them, they are going to be shook and chilled and... And gooped. And gooped because you are so deeply invited to the most personal thoughts and backstage mm-hmm. shit which is interesting also because drag is so much about the illusion exactly and the artifice i tell people this movie's the 23 hours when you're not a drag superstar yeah it's right. the other hours of the day when you're not dressed up i mean when i watch this i'm like at some parts i'm like wow i'm really that bitch i'm like in the sky or like wow i'm really writing that album myself and like doing that and then sometimes it's like wow i'm really pulling my own suitcases and like wow i'm really most of this is not glamorous or cool none of these dressing rooms look nice no there's a lot of uh minivans a lot of yeah it's a lot of like the testament of like determination to actually do what you w- want to do and which means hauling your shit around the world yeah drag in a is hand cart. so glamorous and so not yeah and this movie really touches on that that because sometimes in this movie it's like wow this is the golden age of drag it's drag queens on red carpets mm-hmm. drag queens recording their albums it's clips of trixie and katya show probably besides rupaul i think at that point we were the first two drag queens to have our names and like a actual tv show yeah, TV it, show. yeah. stuff like that that you never thought could happen to drag queens and you would never dream that you would be the drag queen it happens to. So many things like that are cool. And then other parts, I'm like, you're very much reminded that like, oh shit, it is walking through the snow in New York with your guitar in your back <laughs> is not always cute. Right, right. But it, but mostly it makes me, um, when I first watched it the first time, I was pretty, you cried. yeah, I cried. But I was just, it made me feel like, um, I was like crying because I was just like, this movie made me feel like I did something with my life. How often do you feel that feeling? Never until this movie. Because w- <laughs> with the way that you I, look at the world true. with this semi-fatalistic, this could be the end. This could be the last <laughs> thing. Which is, you know, in one way, it's a very responsible way to look at things, right? But also I wonder sometimes, given some of the discussions that we've had, plus re-watching the film, if that sometimes hampers your enjoyment of all the wonderful things that, you know, you've achieved and continue to achieve. Well, that's part of being a hooker, though, is like, (laughs) if you don't suck that dick, somebody else will. Which, in a way, is optimistic, but still. This movie makes me look busy. This is nothing compared to what I'm doing now. Let's get into that a little bit, because I am always shook by how busy you are. Now, I I am a bit of an overworker and a workaholic, you know, but when you factor in the traveling, what were you going to say? You were going to say something funny about LA people. People in LA are like, I'm so busy. (laughs) We were just talking about a friend of ours who was like, I've been too busy. We're like, with what? (laughs) You ain't got no job. Mm-hmm, you ain't got mm-hmm. no place to go. You ain't got shit to do. And they've just recently binged every new show that's been out. Yeah. yeah. Craig, this is my third podcast of the day. Uh, congratulations. Look, and the best one so far, too. And the best so, one. That's this, right. Save this one to last. But, you know, the, I think that this movie communicates something really well, too, that David and Nick, somebody so close to me, yeah. is keenly aware that there ain't no team. One of my friends, Devere, in, in, once in New York, was like, get your people to do it. I was like, what people? You think I have people? <laughs> it's true. When we book the show, I text you or text you and Dave. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and we don't have people. Well, well, one of the reasons I, I made this film was so I could see my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Is yeah, there a follow up coming? <laughs> why did you make this movie? <laughs> that was one of the reasons because you were about to leave the country and be on tour and tour America. And I was like, well, this is a great reason for me to have to be there. Yeah. Um, so it allowed me to follow you around for nine months and actually get to see you because there are times where I don't. How long usually is the longest amount of time that you two are away from each other? A few weeks, maybe. 
There was like a month, a little over a month once. Once it was a month. Yeah. But to be honest, I mean, we talked about this. <laughs> when I go on long trips, really long trips, and then I'm already in close quarters and performing with a million people and me and David share a hotel room. <laughs> yeah. That can be sometimes the opposite where it's like either I don't see him and that sucks or I never have any alone time and we're in each other's faces and that's kind of a lot. Yeah, because you need a little bit of alone time, right? Yeah. He's an artist. He needs his alone But like we time. just went to Europe in the spring and we shared a hotel room and we're together for two months straight. That was a little intensive. Wow, okay. How did that go? It was fine. Yeah. But like when I had my own tour bus, it was nice because David could come for a week and leave or like whatever. Sure. A little more come and go as you please. Mm -hmm. But when we're in Europe, it's like, well, we're all here for a long time. Right. Right. But I also think because I'm your partner and Nick is an old friend of mine. I've known him since I was 18. We were roommates for years. It was really the three of us on the road for nine months and you guys developed like a rapport together and we're so close. It really, I mean, the film is very uh, intimate. Yeah. Part of the reason I never post pictures of David, I like having my relationship very private and like separate from work. Is this the first time that you two are kind of talking about this stuff on Yeah, we, we, we don't even talk about, when we talk about the movie with people, we don't even mention. No, we don't really movie. like do things like this, but I no. thought. Well, David that, doesn't do like, this is David's probably first like on camera. This is like, you're not This on is camera, my first but, on camera interview. But he doesn't do right. interviews right. or nothing. And, and you said, listen, I'll do the on camera, but don't have the camera on. Yeah, exactly. Just yeah. the yeah. microphone. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of exclusive uh, new information today. I'll uh, talk about your relationship, yeah. my situation. <laughs> yes, all the exclusives. <laughs> <laughs> so Whimsically Volatile brings you folks. There was like a Brazilian like gossip rag that posted a picture of me and David and they thought that David was some TV star or something? Well, I understand. I, I wear glasses, so they found this other Brazilian, like a uh, soap star or TV star who doesn't really look that much like. And me. it was like, like an inquirer, and it was like that I was his secret gay lover. Oh, that's fabulous! I was that's literally great. just facetiming with my sister before I walked over here, and she uh, was like, "Oh, I just saw this Brazilian." She like <laughs> asked me about it. I was like, "Yep, they did that." But something that this movie does well that I couldn't have calculated at the time. Um, because David, you know, I trust David more than anybody else yeah. because he was on the other side of the camera. I think it yielded a certain amount of vulnerability that sure. I'm not instinctually into. You say in the film that you don't like to sort of talk about yourself and I'm paraphrasing, but you say, I can do this stuff through Trixie and then that way it's through this filter and it's sort of, you know, yeah. with a certain layer of paint on it and you're comfortable with that. And cause you do reveal quite a bit about a lot um, of your life. A lot, a lot of it. I, you know. I'm happy it's good storytelling. A lot of it, I don't love that people will now know because it's stuff that I, you know, have willfully locked up from my memory of like, I don't need people to know that. To that point, the family stuff? Yeah, like I don't need people to know the extremes of certain things about that. Frankly, because people who complain about their upbringing kind of annoy me and I don't want to be that person. Mm. I, well, I don't think I've ever heard you complain uh, in that way, in a self-pitying way. You've been very frank in discussing that sort of stuff, even in the scene where we see you talking to that morning show. Um, yeah, in like a joke way. Well, yeah, you you know, you you know, package it in a joke, but you know, at the core of it is some pretty intense stuff. But I think that that's inspiring to people to see that you could come from an environment that was so chaotic and disturbing. I mean, you know, we talk about you being removed from your family home and being moved to your grandparents' house because of the the violence that was going on. Um, I'm sure that resonates with a lot of people either going through this, a similar kind of thing or even on a lesser scale to see, again, someone who they admire, which we see some of the fans talking about how you just being you and your work gets them through things or helps them to advance their feelings about themselves. So I think that seeing that stuff uh, only compounds that. So it's a, a great thing, even though it's, I'm sure, yeah. very uncomfortable for you. Oh, yeah. It's like, you know, I try to even remember what day that was. By the way, you'll notice during the interviews, there's a tumbler of pink gin next to me. <laughs> <Our shirt. laughs> so I was drugged and baited into talking mm -hmm. about it. But we did one sit down interview with you kind of in the middle of filming in your garage at the time for hours and hours and hours. Yeah, and I had spent so much time with David and Nick. I mean, three weeks into that process, when I was with alone with Nick and David in the room, I I basically felt like I was alone. Like, well, that's important, like, though, to I, get it, that candor. It was easy to talk to Nick and David. And, um, you know, the filmmaker Nick, is anybody more sensitive than Nick? No, <laughs> Like, not. nobody. He's one of those straight people who's like, um, 
He's like New York artsy straight person. Okay. Which is like LA gay, <laughs> you know? <laughs> sure. Passes for gay in the Midwest. Yeah. Okay. So I guess when people watch those parts of the movie, um, they're not my favorite parts. I don't love that people know that. It just doesn't make me feel good that people know that part of me. But um, Do you feel good about the effect that it will probably have on people though? I like that it maybe might help people. But again, it's just like... Um, I'm proud of it. I think... Yeah. Uh, you know, as a filmmaker, I think it's important. There's not a lot of like progressive LGBTQ content out there. That's not like a little pandering. And I think this film addresses a lot of important issues in our community, addiction, mental health, sure. um, you know, the abuse stuff. And I think not including that would have been a disservice. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like it in the same way. I don't like watching myself fight with my friend on screen or like, yeah, it belongs and it is effective and it people will be helped by hearing it. Yeah, but, but it's still not a jolly ride. Yeah, to, and, for you. No. And maybe it's yeah. because I've 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 heard people gone through so much less and complain about so much more. That's right. And yeah. that has always like just made me just like I hate that. Yeah, rankles you a bit. Now, yeah, it's like oh, your mom yelled at you or like whatever. Like I remember one of my best friends. And, one of my best friends in high school. Her she had one of those moms that like went to all her sports games and was like a little overbearing. And I was like, bitch, they ain't shit. Your mom likes you. <laughs> your mom goes to your shit. You will. How is your relationship with your mom now? Good. She just visited. Um, she just visited um, in LA. I put her in drag for a video that's coming out pretty soon. Oh, that's soon. great. Yeah, because there's a new YouTube channel. Yeah. It was so cute. She's cool. She doesn't... We went out with her in drag to uh, Hamburger Mary's and then precinct. I took her out to oh, precinct. precinct too. Yes. She was in Trixie drag getting drunk. I was like, do you want a glass of wine? She was like, I want shots of tequila. <laughs> Sean, Sean Morales met her and kissed her on the hand and she just about melted. Uh -huh. My mom's so Wisconsin. Uh -huh. She's like in drag watching the Go-Go Boy. She goes, I normally don't like the little skinny ones, but he can really dance. <laughs> you know <laughs> well that's but, nice to hear because even though you know you see a very sweet moment where your mom and family come to the show you sense the strain or the maybe the distance between the two of you on the phone call yeah well you can you can tell that we um you know didn't bag of chips have a similar moment recently on drag race like Ooh, i wouldn't say it's similar. not everybody's relationship with their mom is the same and um me and my mom are obviously like you know son and mom but like we don't have the same relationship probably as most people in their mom let's right. just say that yeah well again like every, i know yeah. david and his mom yeah what's I, your relationship like with your mom david we're close they're very close mm -hmm. david's mom is like an angel i'm jewish so i have an overbearing <laughs> yeah, do, do, david's a jewish gay guy and he, that's his mom they're like lovers okay yeah. <laughs> no uh, but yeah i mean uh, uh, they i mean and they love brian they've come to all of your shows and yeah. even the ones where you talk about my dick <laughs> yeah we're just my mom just aren't super close and you can tell in the movie that there is like we're definitely family but we're just you know i think for better or for worse certain things happen that kind of like probably prohibit any sort of real closeness yeah and it's okay and it's fine i'm not like not mad but there is some like built up like it's like scar tissue, you know? Well, of course, yeah. Even It's actually remarkable that you're able to maintain a relationship given all that stuff. Yeah, and like I think some people, it's sort of self-serving to hold grudges. No one cares. It's like, we, <laughs> we, I had a friend who, you know, was also affected by like Katya and he yeah. stayed mad about it for longer than I thought was fine. And eventually I was like, you're the only one who knows you're mad about this. Like, no one's like or who, or who cares yeah you're just like you're only plaguing yourself here you will feel so much better if you just you know me and my mom have had a lot of discussions as adults of like you get perspective on all that once you turn into an adult yeah you also when you're a kid you think it your your parents know everything because they're adults sure when you become an adult you realize they didn't know shit right you start to realize they people didn't know too. shit yeah especially in a home like that where everybody's judgment is clouded and no one knows what's okay and what's what's unacceptable and it's like again it's like the katya thing nobody's willfully doing this they're all stuck on the same ride here you know there is an interesting thing too where you must have gotten peppered with this even after it was clear that katya was okay but when katya was on tour it was like is, is she all right is how's katya doing people i'd be like well i would be thrown because i'd be like i don't what do you mean like the tour's fine. And then they'd be like, no, no, but like, how's she doing? And I'm like, 
she's doing fine. Like she's doing well, really well. You know what I mean? You can also tell in the movie, there's a section, we talk about it, where like right when Katya publicly told everybody that she was kind of like going underground, it's when every drag queen came out of the woodwork and was monologuing about the time on Twitter, someone called them fat and how they relate to it. And it was like, well, I have mental illness too. Everyone was sort of like taking a, it as a moment to talk it. with themselves. Yeah. There's so many press things from that time where people are asking very directed questions about Katya. Yeah. And I'm just like crickets. Like you don't, it's, it's not my place to give you this, somebody else's information, you know? Right. Right, because also what's actually what, rude. And actually, what if Katya at the time of being asked that wasn't doing well, and you just got off the phone, be like, "Oh, well, here's what happened." Uh, you know, bit of a yeah. train wreck right now. I so. should have done like the LA thing. I've been like, "Message of hope, <laughs> just a message of hope." Yeah, David, what was it like for you to to watch Brian go through that whole thing personally? He laughed so. and laughed. <laughs> I know that's what oh, I wanted yeah. to get on the show. I wanted to get it like was hilarious the no. vicious jokes you made. I it thought was were really so um, heartbreaking to watch it all happen and um you know it was i mean it's in the film it, you know it, something happened and then the the kind of that cloud followed you for months and it it was something that people brought up with you a lot and asked you about um you know but it was hard to uh be there for it i think that's probably the last time i cried really do you remember the first day when yeah i felt like it was going to get canceled oh my god i cried all night all night that's the last time you i like cried, cried yourself probably. to sleep Oh my I God, remember. I cried mm-hmm. to the point of like, like no boogers left in the nose. <laughs> my face was burning because I yeah. was so disappointed. You know, my work means everything to me. Yeah. And to have the biggest opportunity at my time, at the time, be there one day and be gone the next was like, Devastating. I could not stop crying. Yeah. It was so hard. It was, no. it's, but that, I mean, that shows you what kind of asshole I am. That was the last time I cried. <laughs> well, when I won Drag Race, mm-hmm. yeah, which they have on, they yeah, have which is beautiful, great. beautiful footage of me winning drag race yeah. it makes me cry every time because mm-hmm. every time i watch it so see you, you, you lie you really, cried again yeah, yeah you can really tell i didn't i did not know i was gonna win and you can see my even through all that makeup you can see my face like realize it yeah and just like you cover your 10 face years and... of doing drag go, to that moment was like what you know and i think it's another good crazy. example of what you're talking about what the film is about like there's this bad thing going on in that our friend is going through a really horrible time and you're worried about that but you know your tour is getting bigger everything's growing and growing and your hard work is paying off and then you win drag race so again there's this wonderful thing happening and then over here is a terrible thing happening but these things all coexist at the same time yeah it was like the, the next day remember when i won drag race and the next day i had to do that press day mm-hmm. you have all the same press phoners set up no matter what they all either just begin with congratulations or I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Like, yeah. so many things in your life really are not dependent on a crown or winning or anything. They're just like getting up, brushing your teeth, making, yeah. uh, making some food or ordering food. I was going to do that tour no matter what. I was going to make that record no matter what. Yeah. We were going to lose that TV show no matter what. <laughs> you know, like... Uh, well, that's why you win and then, you know, it, the film keeps on trucking. Yeah, you know? it's like next day. I think the next... We go straight to DragCon pretty much. And also you say even after you win, you're headed on the way back, you make a joke about the gay dressing room or something. And then also- Oh yeah, you, yeah. I win Drag Race, confetti falls from the ceiling and then T-Rex from Chicago at the time, you did yeah. a podcast with her, right? Not yet, I want oh, to. Oh, she's bomb. Yeah. We, um, I go, T-Rex, I if you're listening, please get in touch or I'll get in touch with you. This tells you what kind of person she is and what kind of bitches I grew up with in drag. I was like, the confetti, I couldn't believe it. And T-Rex goes, yeah, it was for if you lost, but we didn't want to waste it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's the uh that's the showbiz distilled into one line isn't it totally totally yeah. but again it was like watching the tv and i'm also looking at single pieces of confetti falling here and there because so much confetti up there balloons or whatever is like suspended yeah and it's like i'm trying to watch the tv and i don't know what's going to happen and little piece of confetti keep reminding me that something could happen sure you know that whole scene is so amazing and yeah it's and beautiful i mm-hmm. can't believe it and the shot i mean nick must have been i don't remember nick must have been like, was up like right my up ass there he is. <laughs> it was so close and i'm so shocked I, I, it's so cool he tried to get a shot in there of me like crying <laughs> in the audience but you know i'm not really in the film people always Wasn't ask that the about night that I met your mom was the yeah you met my mom in the alley behind rocco R- roscoe's in full drag it was quite a scene. <laughs> and then like an hour later, she watched me. It was her first night with me was watching me win Drag Race. That yeah. was such a weird time. Yeah. That's a good starter. Well, I'm this from movie... Chicago. My family's in Chicago. And uh-huh. we were in Chicago for the win at Roscoe's. So my, uh, yeah, my family was there. 
When did you move to LA, David? Ten, it'll be 10 years in January. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, it's a long time. Mm, a yeah. long time. And David's also a casual uh, reality TV connoisseur. Very casual, very I am, casual. I'm sitting here staring at Stasi Schroeder's book. Oh, yes, yes that's right. dig in. <laughs> yes, you're a fellow Vanderpump Rules fan. <laughs> I am. It's one of my beyond, favorite TV beyond. shows. Yeah, what yeah. else do you, you watch? Housewives, all of them pretty much. I, I love the Housewives. I love, I love Vanderpump Rules. You know, the Boulay brothers are obsessed with the Housewives as well. I mean, it's a great show. Whenever I introduce David to people and they get to know each other, if David and them will have Housewives or whatever in common, it's like... You lose them for the night. Like, <laughs> well, we are. I, was, I, mean, I know that feeling. You live in this building that uh, uh, Jax and Brittany and Katie and Schwartz lived in. That's right. They and, no longer live here, and they came to this building David through moved me across the street. Hmm. That's right. David's across. I know. I <laughs> live, I've I've come across the street from Craig. <laughs> binoculars. That's right. We're street neighbors. Um, so this is a historic building for me. Uh, friends at home, David and Craig literally live across the street from yes, each other. Yes, we do. Yeah, that's right. It's very easy to, to walk over here. Um, but yeah, I love uh, I love myself a uh, housewife or uh, Vanderpump Rules. You excited about the upcoming season with the of new course. characters coming? I don't on? know about the new characters though. I mean. It was getting a little stale, so maybe they'll freshen it up. I mean, they're on like season seven now. Season it's eight, actually. Eight, eight. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. I know. They've all bought houses and moved to the Valley. Yeah. So now they're not going to pretend that they work at the restaurants anymore, though. So Thank that's God. Good. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy about that. But do they're they really um, just like, because they're too famous, they just do like one shift a week for the camera or what? Kind of. Yeah. 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 Oh, they, they, it's like a personal appearance. They show up. And I mean, the servers can't really serve food because they're besieged by autograph people and picture people. Or people who want selfies, not picture people. Do the so. new people work at the restaurant? Though? Yes. And they do, yeah. Yeah, they do, yeah. So they get to How do all weird. this. It's a, and it's show, a very though. strange thing. Drag it is a great drag show. Ra- RuPaul should make drag queens work at Hamburger Mary's while they're on Drag Race. <laughs> that would be a great spin-off. <laughs> I think it'd be better than Drag It's a good challenge. Yeah. <laughs> um, Seriously, there's how many places that serve like lips and stuff, places where drag queens work as servers? Oh, they yeah, They should have yeah. a Drag Race challenge where they have to work at restaurants. By the way, would you like a refill on your drink? I'm okay. Okay. David, you good? Uh, yeah. Um, it's funny though. The other night we were well, I wasn't invited. You were invited to Erica Jane's uh, s- her shoe dazzle event, and I was <laughs> so excited. And then you got horrible food poisoning, food poisoning. and we couldn't go. Oh, couldn't what, go. now what brought about this food poisoning? Because we were going Gelson's trick ass Gelson's. What? No, Bunk I love Gelson's. Don't hate Gelson's. on Gelson's. Listen, I love Gelson's too, but now I'm a little concerned. I mean, it was falafel from Gelson's. First off, I got to get treatment for one thing. Yeah, soon and now. <laughs> Well, maybe you can just get food poisoning and shit out the gonorrhea. Oh, maybe. Yeah, that's a good tactic. <laughs> oh, I got to make a phone call about that soon, too. Yeah, let someone it, know. It was so. I thought food poisoning was was fake. You did. I thought it was like like L.A. people who are like, I'm sick. Because they get like one stomach rumble and they're like, I have food poisoning. Or or also a way to get out of a commitment. Yeah, and maybe I spent too much time with like, you know those people where no matter what, you're like, how are you? They're like... I did not sleep good last night. <laughs> like, there's that always something wrong. Always something wrong. Sure, yeah. And do you I, think that's very typical of LA people? Just any people. Okay. Everybody's always on the verge of death. No one slept good. Everyone's sick. Everyone has a. a I'm like. But you have a little patience for that because of your punishing schedule. Yes, I'm like. Uh, Let's get into your do you schedule. Know how, do you know how bad my food poisoning had to be? For me to call out of. Uh, I canceled a day of filming <laughs> you YouTube. Did. Yes, that's and what, and we were going to tape that day. And so oh, that yeah, was, we were. yeah. Oh, yeah. I was so sorry. But it worked out better now because I didn't get any phone calls from the clinic that day. I know. It uh, all, it all came together perfectly. It, it did. I puked every hour for Oof. like 10 hours. Did you uh, shit yourself as well? Oh, the whole time. Oh, okay. What was the meal in particular that gave you this well, gift? Well, I left Jason Wimberley's and I thought, you know, I'm going to walk down the hill and go to Gelson's. He gets a little healthy snack. <laughs> so I got some avocado spread to put on toast and I got um, some like a falafel. Oh, okay. Bitch. And then I had to go to the makeup lab because we were getting holiday products ready. Yeah. I had to go to the makeup lab and put on eyeshadow while desperately holding in diarrhea. <laughs> Are there photos from this day? No, I'm in the... And then get this. Get this. After I was at the lab doing all this testing, different than your kind of testing, but... <laughs> I came home with one grace and to, to um, you know hint some of the products from next year Ooh, one yeah, yeah. Give us neutral a... smoky eye and one pink and purple eye yeah and i was so sick that i puked in that makeup for hours <laughs> and slept for a whole day in eyeshadow <laughs> like like in my bed shitting myself with eyeshadow different eyeshadow on each eye like 
This is another documentary short that could have been made. Yeah, I think. This is, do you see why they turned the cameras off? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I mean, we could have made a sequel. We could. I mean, there's every so much happening in your life all the time. That's the reason we made the film. Yeah, and it continues to only get bigger and bigger. And I would bigger. love to make it a TV series like the Ashley Simpson autobiography series. Uh, well, I think you could. I would love that. I mean, because your schedule is so crazy that. Well, I got to see you in London, which was really great. You did two days at GAY London. Yes. Yeah. I don't do a lot of clubs anymore, but I always do like Roscoe's, J-A-Y, any, any like kind of like legend, sure. super fun clubs. But it's crazy. We, you know, we have Katya and I are just finishing the final manuscript of the book. Mm, yeah, that's right. Which is called? Uh, which is called Trixie and Katya's Guide to Modern Womanhood, now available for pre-order on Amazon. That's right. Yes, I, I ordered mine. Order Thank yours. You. Oh, you're it's welcome. It's so funny. Katya is too modest. Her chapters are psycho. They are so funny. I'm looking forward to reading the whole thing. Uh, she gave a preview of the hair chapter on the show i i listened oh you did well thank she you she is so funny and her i mean she really schooled the school on this book she uh-huh. is so funny it is so good and then we're working on the next record barbara now is that what i've seen you recording in the insta stories or is that the soundtrack album both i just finished the soundtrack album congratulations and then i'm working on the new album barbara mm-hmm. which is really cool because you know i go through my decades this one is like an eight track so uh-huh. it's four tracks on the top and four tracks on the bottom, different, you know. Oh, um, sure. Yeah, yeah. And then we're working on my grown-up tour. I start in February. I've got my tickets, uh, second road at the Novo. To the, the Novo? Yeah. In the Novo, selling really well. But we're touring with a band and we're doing like 10 plus costume changes. I'm really just trying to like do it. Yeah. Make it big and crazy. And you seem it. to only accelerate the tempo of your schedule. Well, last year I toured moving parts with like my harp and my guitar and my jokes. And I'm like, well, how do I... For all the people who come again this year, because so many people see me every year. They do. Let's try multiple to really, dates. Yeah, let's snatch their wig. Let's try to make it better and more. And Right. Know. And then Katya and I are touring Australia and New Zealand. Yeah, that'll be really fun. Yeah, we're doing the absolute living most. And then I think that's yeah, it. And then the movie. this year. Yeah. Well, yeah, the movie will be out in uh, in a week and a half on uh, iTunes, Google, Amazon, a bunch of uh, Vimeo. Plus, I'm, no. launch- I'm launching some new cosmetics on Black Friday. Oh, fantastic. And we have new products coming out all through 2020. It's cool. crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. But do you find that you get satisfaction the more that you do? Or do you find that you are worn down a little bit? Or is it a mixture? Um, like in the per- I definitely, on a weekly basis, wish for like an eighth day of the week. <laughs> sure. Not for like more work, but just like I wish I could work seven days a week and then steal one day off that yeah. no one else gets. Are you able to schedule in days off? I'm in charge of my own schedule, which is why when I'm too busy, it's my own fault. When I say, are you able to, in your mind, are you able to give yourself that time? Or like, for instance, I know that I will run myself into the ground and I'm not even factoring in like the amount of travel that you do. You know what I mean? I'm talking about just like taping and editing and all that stuff. So it's like a compulsion, but like, I love it. But at the same time, I do go like every once in a while, I'm like, oh my God, I've got to like, just take a day off. But then I don't. I don't. Do I? No, you're a workhorse. You love to work. And when you're not working, you're still working. You find a way to work. Yeah. How are you with that, David? And both the way that you (laughs) look at your work schedule. (laughs) He loves it. Uh, Because do you find that you get just enough time with him? Um, Yeah, sure. (laughs) Yeah, we do. (laughs) Well, explain a little bit more. We have to do podcast thing. (laughs) (laughs) That's Um, why you're finally doing a podcast. We we probably see each other three times a week. At for least. like 90 minutes, at least. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just short supervised sessions. visits. Yeah, yeah, I'll say we see each other four times a week and we'll like sleep over about three times a week. Okay. But like one day, maybe we'll just go to, I'll catch him after Jason and we'll get a smoothie or we'll go to dinner or something. Or So it's like you're still dating even though you're in a relationship. And, that, and I mean that in a good way. And David has a very vibrant nightlife. I have a very demanding morning life. So that's always kind of hard to like match up because I'll go see David and I'll have to leave in the morning. Or like, how often do I leave David sleeping in my house and I have to go somewhere? That happens a few times. Like, bye, David. And he's well, like, like, I have a five. You've been to Canada maybe 80 times in the last few months. You're like, I have a 5 a.m. flight to Canada. So I'll sleep in. Yeah. Sometimes I'll be like, let's have a sleepover, but I have to leave at 5 a.m. <laughs> But sometimes that, that's the that's what you get though. I'll be in bed and you'll be getting ready to go and Brandon will be in the other room packing your suitcase. Yeah, we'll wake up to my assistant packing the suitcase in the mm-hmm. other room. The Barbie's just staring at me. But we traveled together a lot. <clears throat> we went to Europe, I mean, three times in the last three years together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where'd well, you oh, go ahead? Well, that's like I said, I mean, one of the reasons I made the film is so I could tag along. <laughs> David, we and then you discovered you you had too much of it and you're like, I'm not doing a second documentary. Right. Yeah. David came to Australia this year. Oh, okay. I went on the skinny legend, uh the 
international leg of the tour. Usually when I go to Chicago, David will go because he'll visit his family. Sure. Mm -hmm. You're performing right across the street from my mom's apartment again. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be at Roscoe's in Chicago in December. Anybody want to come? (laughs) (laughs) What does your time together when you're on tour look like? David gets, he lives his TV watching and movie watching life. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Remember how many like movies and TV shows you watched on tour? Yeah. But it's a lot of, um, you know, it's everyone's like, oh my God, you get to go to Australia and then David's tour the UK. <laughs> yeah. And they, everyone, you know, all my friends or family, they're like, oh, it's, it's like a trip. It's a vacation. It's not, you're there to work. And so it's usually, we all have jobs to do. We're so- on a tour bus. We get off the tour bus, go into the venue, sit in the dressing room for hours. Yeah. You know, you do the show. Sometimes I watch the show. Most of the times I do. Sometimes I just hang out in the dressing room. Then the show ends. We wrap up, get back on the bus. If we're in a hotel that night, we go to the hotel. It's it's, it's kind of like Groundhog's Day. I feel the worst for David because we all have like me, Fina, whoever. We all have like shit to do every day. Yeah. And then David is not only bored... He, also, everyone's like abandoned him because they all have shit to do, and so he also <laughs> has a lot of downtime. You know, the the uh, UK leg is always fun. Uh, I like the the crew that we're with mm-hmm. there. Um, Victoria's Secret. And, when we first started traveling, David got very like. Do you remember when we first started traveling? And you're like, I think we landed in Ireland, and you were like, "Wake up, we should go for a walk." And I'm like. Oh, bitch, we don't do that around here. <laughs> we don't leave hotel rooms. I know. I like wanted we to don't just do like, nothing. yeah, no, no, we don't get to see anything, do anything fun. Um, but yeah, the first time we went to the UK, we landed in Dublin and I made you like, ins- it was like 7 a.m. I was like, it's bad to go to sleep right now. We got to stay up for the day. And I like dragged you around Dublin and you were so pissed <laughs> over it. Because I go to Europe like three times a year. I'm like, it's always, it's been here for 3 million years. It'll be here next year. The castle, the castle will stay be here next year. <laughs> How many times were you in England this year? Because I know that you were at, again, like I said, G-A-Y. Probably three times. Three, yeah. You were there for the Skinny Legend tour for Drag Con or Drag World. Yeah. And then for G-A-Y mm-hmm. recently. Yeah. The movie is actually showing at a documentary theater in London right now. Oh, it just wrapped last night. It was at the Birth of Doc House. Many showings? Yeah, we had like 10 sold out screenings of the doc. It's playing at a... The Ted Rogers Hot Doc Cinema in Toronto right now. I got to say, we are supposed to be, you know, on this podcast telling people to pre-order and check out the movie, but people have so fiercely pre-ordered the movie that yeah. um, it was on the the homepage for pre-orders. It was like the third most pre-ordered movie. It was It 2, It Chapter 2. Like The Joker. The Joker and then Moving Parts. Yeah. And the real reason is you just want to come over and chat with me. I, I know yes. that. And also tell people to maybe I wanted to hear down. your test results. Because yeah. <laughs> that, that affects me. Uh. <laughs> yeah, some more breaking news, yeah. everybody. That man, that, we, we brought you here to tell you that me and Craig are gay lovers and that I'm the one who gave him anal gonorrhea. Anal gonorrhea. Yeah. But that I got was, it from David. I'm so. Yeah. so glad we did this podcast just for that moment. That was Have you had gonorrhea? I don't You've know. You've had a scare. Well, you yeah. might have it now based on what yeah, we just told right. you. He's had a scare, but not had it. So what's the scare like? Because I just had the full Monty. Of, well, that's the like, first STI well, I've when, ever had, When someone way. calls you or like warns you that they have it, and then you oh, freak out and okay. you go get tested, or you go, and they can treat it right away without giving you the results. So you get the shot or take the pills, and then they call you in a few days, and they're like, well, you didn't have it. And you're like, great. But you take the shot anyway. Yeah, you, you always just take the safe. shot. Always <laughs> take the shot. Take the sandwich and take the shot. Yeah. I also had it in that whole... Um, the afternoon dalliance condom broke never had that happen to me oh. before so that was a little freaky um but anyway condom broke out, with a guy yeah the condom i was wearing broke while i was inside oh. that person oh. yeah do you think he's pregnant um, your dick just kool-aid the- man through that condom. <laughs> <laughs> yes it did yes it did <laughs> Yeah, so it was a rambunctious afternoon. Oh, a lot of firsts for you. A lot of firsts. Yeah, yeah, a lot yeah, of firsts, actually. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens with late in life gays. They go overboard. Oh, r- okay. Just too much, too fast. Yeah. David was late in life gay. Oh, really? Now, when did you realize well, that you late were late in life gay? <laughs> well, if you went to college and you didn't come out in college, to me, that is late in life gay. I see. Okay, sure. And now, when did you come out again? College, freshman year, 18 years okay, old. Okay, sure. The womb. I love that the film is about, it doesn't really dwell on you being a gay man. The first scene is you 
in your home, pointing at these old pictures of you being like, I've always been gay. This is how gay I was. And that's it. That's sure, like right. really the only mention of it. It's not about like you're coming out. It's not like in, in, about that. We don't dwell on my really my history. Yeah. It's not one of those docs where we interview my mom and my babysitter, my first grade teacher. It's <laughs> it's the snapshot of right now. Yeah. And yeah, you sort of get that information out of the way. Anyone who wasn't yeah. aware that you were gay would yeah. find out. This yeah. would be a really cool movie, too, if you knew nothing about me, because I think a lot of people don't know what drag queens are up to. And I think people will be stunned and gagged to see some of the things that I'm doing in this movie. They're going to be like, what? Well, I was actually thinking of uh, suggesting that my mom watch the movie because she doesn't really know, you know, a lot about the queen. She knows about, you know. What's her name? Lydia. Lydia, pre-order moving parts yeah. on iTunes. <laughs> please, Lydia. <laughs> and join Hot Dog Club, please. Yeah, Lydia, join Hot Dog Club. I mean, the two of you are members, of course. Of course. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Hot Dog. <laughs> <laughs> I know, you can't wait for those movie clubs. And maybe we'll do one on Tommy sometime. Uh, we'll have to do one on the Scream films. I want to do one on the Scream movies. Yeah. Is, so bad. is Bianca performing tonight? Oh, is she? She might be, yeah. I'm so bad at like things that are going on because I find, I okay, I'm going to see Liz Fair on monday i saw her this past monday i had tickets to her first monday at, at largo mm -hmm. with the full monty she has a book q a who was it liz fair she uh i yeah. love liz fair she's playing at the largo yeah monday night do you want to go there's still some tickets available we no. love the largo largo so good like doing fun isn't things. this the best <laughs> part of breaking up finding someone else you can't get enough of also um i was gonna say though wait i missed the first night of it because i was like working on shows mm. and then i um was sitting here all tired and then i look at the email and i go oh fuck i should be at the least fair show right now so then i bought tickets to the other oh shit the other uh installments but what were you gonna say i just love her oh yeah she's i started great. playing guitar around the time of like avril lavigne Liz fair michelle branch it was like women with oh, guitars yeah, happening sure yeah and so I, she's icon one of my goals is to do a show in LA and my like idol icon is Michelle Branch. Uh -huh. And one of my goals is to do a show where we do like a double billing. You know what? She might actually do it. Or like my real goal. I love playing for people. Like if Ashley Simpson wants to come sing autobiography top to bottom, I'll play for her. I'll play for her for free. Okay, sure. What about a, just a guest spot? She comes on and does a three song suite. Well, me and my friend Elliot who do, um, Elliot Glazer, he's like a comedian he sings and we were talking about doing a show where we perform her album autobiography like top to bottom because i think the gays would turn out that, for that. album is legendary. it's great yeah. but then i made a video playing boyfriend which yeah. is from her second album i made a video playing my electric guitar and i have found that i'm just famous enough that if i tag the artist in a cover they will respond and see yeah. it the go-go's reposted me playing we got the beat and oh I that's was right wig snatched i bet <laughs> jane weedland would do something with you oh i yeah. can yeah, absolutely. You know, she's way into kink and stuff, too. Yeah, that reads, right? Yeah, it totally reads. Yeah. yeah, she's the edgy one of the Go-Go's. Totally. Yeah. She's kind of the one who doesn't want to be there, which I love. Uh, in terms of your relationship, how much do you want to actually talk about? Our gay love? Yeah. Well, what do you want to know? <laughs> well, you know, your expanded sexual universe with others? Us? <laughs> well, I mean, we've basically been together three years, so we met on Tinder. Yeah. And we were really into each other right away. We went on. Our, our, we went to the Roger Room, which is connected to the Largo. Mm. He suggested trunks. I suggested the Roger Room for our first date. Tell him the joke about our baby. Oh, uh, I. <laughs> it's a, such a stupid joke. I say, oh, we should always we should name our firstborn after where we went on our first date. <laughs> room. <laughs> that's the kind of content I'm here for. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. the kind of the yeah. knee slapper. But we matched on Tinder, and um, we went on a, a date, and we went on a drink date, and. Roger Room is one of those places that makes really nice, fancy drinks. Yeah. I got to say a better choice Secret trucks, drunk. I say. I makes you secret oh, drunk. Oh, yeah. Because you're also carried away oh, by the atmosphere. Lit. We yeah. were really hitting it off. So when you meet someone you really like, you're just talking a mile a minute. And we're talking so fast and drinking so fast. And David drinks fast. Yeah. What's your favorite drink, David? Uh, back then, it was Manhattan's. Ooh, used yeah. To like, whenever we go somewhere nice, you usually get a Manhattan, like a hotel bar or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I do. Well, no, I'm really into a dirty martini right now. Okay. He's gross. The blue cheese olive. <laughs> mm. He is so gross. But I'm a gay man, so we also love a vodka soda, but you got to have a splash of pineapple. My friends oh, and I are trying yeah. to spread this around. It's called a VSP, vodka soda pineapple. I like that. Now, do you like a splash of limeade? I've never had a, li a splash of limeade in my vodka soda. If you'd like one, I can happily make you one. Oh, maybe. I you am want to pause and get a drink? Yeah, let's sure. do it. Let's pause and get a drink. Hey, Craig, it's Goss Charlotte. Um, thank you so much for having me on the show. And um, you mentioned you live in West Hollywood, so that begs the question, are you gay? 
um, you know, I'm just wondering, not, not like to hate or anything, just for personal reasons. And um, like, have you ever been to Palm Springs? That that might be an indicator. I don't know, but uh, get back to me at your earliest convenience. Um, yeah, I, I it would help me sleep at night. Well, we got really drunk on our first day at the Roger Room. Anybody yeah. ever goes to LA? And it's a great date spot because it's very small booths, like mm-hmm. two seats. Very intimate. And the, the servers there, it's one of those old-fashioned kind of bars where they wear like vests and little ties and they they make the drinks like really nice. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like the drinks at Gracias Madre are also like really fancy. Oh, date, they are. Date night drinks. Yeah. And that's Gracias good if, you're, if you want a vegan night. And well, I just think- He's we, a vegetarian, so we'd like that spot. Yeah, yeah, sure. We got drunk on accident fast and- I, t- I didn't it took me a long time dating david to know how fast he drinks so then when he would be like you want another i would be like a step behind but say yes and then we both oh you know, okay now what do you do do you say i'm gonna have a water and wait or on- honestly honestly craig between me and you mm-hmm. when i go out with david or his friends i let them do a round and then i start oh that makes a big difference okay sure not sure. that i know that because i'm always fighting a hangover so if i start later than everyone else it usually ends well for me. Okay, sure. Because I don't get as drunk. And yeah, I will say he can be very, very drunk, and he you will not be able to tell. Full tilt blackout. Like, it's a, and, it's a talent. Like I'm, I'm blackout, stumbling normal. down a sidewalk, walking into a tree. <laughs> yeah, and you're like operating like nothing's wrong. I think I've been with the both of you in that situation. Yeah, probably. Yeah, we were mm-hmm. at the Abbey after something. Oh yeah, af- yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. That's right. You you and I were talking about Vanderpump Rules one time with the Yes, we were. <laughs> it was after that. Well, I think drinking makes you more yourself. Okay. And David is like even more bubbly and chatty. Yeah. And I'm probably like I just I close the blinds more. Sure. Which is sure. kind of a dark way to drink. Well you get oddly it's philosophical like, in a way. You'll yeah. stare out at the room and then you'll make an observation. Yeah, and I get it's quieter. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so people think I'm bored, but I'm just drunk. Uh, and then we I remember there was a couple beyond da- the foreground of David and they were in the same side of the booth, like making out. And I was like, Those people are sitting on the same side making out. I remember David went, Well, why don't you come over here? Ooh. And then we were like Strong publicly moves. making out in this straight bar. That's great. Yeah. We actually played it really cool. I mean, we didn't have like intercourse, intercourse until three months in. And yeah. then we went and got tested and first and then all that, which is pretty responsible. I don't think either of us wanted to use protection and we kind of just wanted to wait then and use no protection. Right. Because if you are, wait the wait the window of time and you're monogamous, you can just forego it. Sure. Now, are you still monogamous? We are now. We weren't for a while and then it just wasn't it wasn't that great. What were the was it uh, complicated or was it just less than ex- as exciting as maybe you thought it would be? It was just like who cares? Yeah. It kind of just reminded us both I think that when you can sleep with anyone, you remember that oh right, I don't wa- <laughs> it's hard to find someone you actually want to sleep with. That's true too and then there's also the whole dance of going through the uh getting to know you part of right. things. I remember when we like both downloaded like a grinder again, we were like some of these people's pictures haven't changed in three years. And <laughs> yeah. they have not left Well, I've lived here 10 years. Some of these pictures haven't changed <laughs> in 10 years. Yeah. But we have yeah. a pretty, like, I don't know. Wholesome. Yeah, wholesome and, like, regular sex life. Well, we love sex each other. Life. And we don't have an ample amount of time together. Yeah, sure. So, so when we are together, we usually are very, like, it's date night every night for us. Because right. we don't have, like, boring nights together. We don't have a surplus of nights together. Sure. So, so. they yeah, they got to be action-packed. Well, that's not true. We sit around and watch a lot of horror movies. <laughs> but that's not boring. No, we love that. That's our favorite yeah, thing to do. Which is great. But I mean, normal couples, if they like live together, might be in different rooms doing different things. Also, I mean, this is unsolicited gay dating advice, but uh, having intercourse with someone on the first date is never a good idea. If you want to date them. Really? We, yeah. If you want to date them. We definitely did like um hand stuff sure sure like uh hand signals the asl yeah mm-hmm. we did mm-hmm. like spirit fingers yeah sure. <laughs> but we really, I, I know the spirit finger yeah i think we both really liked something in each other and so yeah. we we foresaw there being time to do that stuff yeah. right yeah we definitely rushed to like make out and touch and take clothes off but we weren't like going full everything right away mm-hmm. i think yeah. building up that intimacy uh before is really important to maintaining a relationship when you fuck on the first date i think you kind of lose it yeah i mean you could certainly have a fuck buddy totally and that's fine but i have a lot of uh, gay male friends who don't understand why they can't find a boyfriend and i'm like well because you fuck everyone you meet right away (laughs) and then that's all they want to do they don't want to date you they just want to fuck you because actually you can put people in little 
categories. Yeah. Somebody you want to fuck, you get to know them first. And then a lot of times you lose your interest in fucking them. You think so, yeah. I call that a dodged bullet. Like, Oh, it is a dodged bullet. That's why bullet. so many gay guys don't want to talk first. Because they just want to, they're, because then they're going to be confronted with the fact that they're sleeping with someone they don't like, yeah. Mary. But I'm very pro-sex, fuck whoever you want in whatever mm-hmm. way you want. But yeah, it goes both ways. If you're Pollyanna like me, you can also like be Pollyanna. Yeah, right. Well, that's the thing. You do you. You're Pollyanna, yeah. uh, not polyamorous. And I was like gay young, like in, I was gay through college. So like all the crazy or like all the threesomes all and all done that. It yeah. all. I've, yeah. I've never done had a threesome. So oh, okay. and I've had like he's had innumerable, millions. innumerable. Yeah. You were shocked when I told you that I had never had a threesome. Yeah, I have had like threesomes and foursomes. Well, and, Craig, the night is young. <laughs> <laughs> and I just like there. I think I think threesomes. I've told Dave this because he's never had one. I'm like, it's a super hot idea. And then like I think. Five seconds in, you sort of are like, okay, now I wish it was two of us again. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. What, what's the I dynamic that, know. oh, yeah. See, that's the thing. When you don't know, it's like, I don't well, know. I, <laughs> <laughs> Someone fuck both of us. Yeah. No. <laughs> and I've always been the, the, the two in the couple, and then there's a third. And so then it's fun. And then eventually you're like, get can out, this person leave now? Yeah. yeah. Were there ever regular third partners? No, I just want someone regular for once. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're, everyone's uh, always so irregular. Oh, n- maybe a little bit in mm-hmm. college. I mean, but yeah, see, I wasn't gay in college, so I never got to do all those fun. Yeah, things. I had boyfriends in college that you know we were very like we were never open, but we were very open to sleeping with other people together. Oh, you played together. Yeah, yeah, sure. Now, David, so you didn't come out till after college. When did you come out? I was like twenty five or twenty six. So, what were you doing before that? Were you having relations? No, no, I was just like deeply depressed. <laughs> Sure. Well, the, I mean, that tracks, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, this is turning into therapy. <laughs> um, no, see, I well, don't know. This is the only kind of person who will love me. Somebody who spent <laughs> f- most of their life repressed and depressed. I wasn't that repressed. I mean, I'm sitting here wearing a leopard print sweater. That's so. true. Talking about sex. And, and I grew uh, up in a house with a leopard print carpet. Yeah. Oh, there you go. They turned me gay. Um, no, knowing your family, it's comedic to me that you ever didn't come out because David's family couldn't be more fabulous. David's family is like the Shit's Creek family. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Yeah. What's your mom's name? Lynn. More Hello, Lynn. Yeah. Yeah. They're very uh, nice in Sweden. Lynn and Larry. Oh, I love that. Yeah. yeah. Lynn and Larry Silver it really flows off the top. Yes, yeah. Really. Yeah. So when did you finally make the break? I like uh, 25, 26. I mean, I have always been gay. I mean, I went to theater camp. I like have always been very gay. Um, but I went on a date with a boy when I was like 25 and I, that was that, you know, I like, I had, I knew I was gay, obviously. Um, I don't really remember what I was like so fearful of, but a lot has changed in the last 10 years. Yeah, certainly. Um, and I will say the thing I'm most proud of about this film moving parts is that it shows a gay person today in America working hard and succeeding, which I think for young gay people, like, I don't remember a lot of content like that when I was a kid. I think I'm probably the first age group, well, we're like the same age, but we're being gay can really be like inconsequential. Yeah. Like we're not, gay. I mean, I'm a drag queen, but like, what is a gay artist or like a mm-hmm. gay this? It, it's really not anything. Well, yeah, the definitions of that are less than they were, say like when, for instance, Scissor Sisters came out and every article was like, gay band, right. gay pop Completely. band. Completely. Yeah. But also like, you're still a famous drag queen and I still think that there is like still um, some like progress to be made and like you being respected more than other drag queens i think i'm a lot of straight people's first drag queen okay sure lesbians lesbians and straight people Mm -hmm. are primarily my audience yeah i would say gay men are my less than 20 percent what uh, queens do you think that gay men prefer (laughs) uh Alyssa, (laughs) Alyssa. angela okay trinity Mm -hmm. kimura Mm -hmm. like really cunty like female pop star sort of diva characters sure yeah yeah and I think the jokiness of what I do and the guitar shit resonates more with like, I don't know, for some reason, Trixie and the, the lesbians are, I was at this event in Vancouver two nights ago and I was like, how's the audience up there? And they're like, the lesbians are out. They are out in full force. They love you. They, we love they, them. They're the yeah. best, the best. They they love comedy. They love beauty. They love um, drag they, and, and they love buying tickets and supporting you. You mentioned to me, I think in London about the buying habits 
of the lesbian contingent in your audience. They already have the tickets. They already have the meet and greet. Everything's booked already. Because they feel like since they like your art, they are proud and enthused to slip you a few bucks to see you because they're like, it's worth it. I love it. And if I don't do it, it might discontinue. Which is a good uh, thing for everyone to keep in mind. Anything that you enjoy, do support it. Yeah, which which gay men... Speaking of which, patreon.com slash crack yeah. friends. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's easier for gay, gay men have a tendency, I think, to be more like the last minute ticket buyer. You know, that not that they don't buy tickets, but they are more like the, the, the week of uh-huh. tickets. Well, I will say like with this film, trying to sell it was difficult. It's a documentary about a drag queen and people were telling me documentaries are hard sells. It's about a drag queen and um double hard sell is that i mean? guess i don't know i mean we're selling it ourselves so we're uh, i'm releasing it myself so it's uh please support the film pre-order it don't pirate it people keep commenting that they're gonna pirate so, the movie but, <laughs> but you know what they're yeah, telling me they're true. gonna steal my movie but i self, love that self-release is the new large release yeah it is it is you know larue's Both putting my her records out are self-releases. well yeah no owning owning it and keeping it and releasing it yourself and controlling it i think has been really a, a fun process to figure out we're excited about it. People really want to see the movie. And so it was getting frustrating waiting around for someone to come. We got one kind of lousy offer. And I was like, you know what? I can figure this out myself. So I did. Um, because uh, honestly, your audience like loyalty is everything. Absolutely. People who watch uh, every week. Yeah. Yeah. People who spam every picture every day saying, when is season five of uh, coming out? Yeah. This movie, for anything I say about it all year, people will be like, when is it going on sale? Well, I mean, we, pre- oh, yeah. we premiered at the Tribeca Film Festival, which is one of the best film festivals in the world. Um, it was a huge honor to be included in the festival. They we told played- us it was like the fastest sellout. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, we played at Outfest, we've played at Frameline, we've played at festivals all over the world now, um, and people were really eager to see it, and instead of waiting around, we figured out how to release it ourselves, so December 3rd it will be available for pre-order. Um, and in a way, it, it's it's frustrating, I imagine, because you see the demand for it, and then you're getting this lackluster response from releasing organizations, but then when you right. do put it together, like, wait, we can do it ourselves, that must be kind of a, well, also, a liberating a- moment. Everyone was commenting on every post on Instagram, you know, put it on Netflix, and that's not how that works. I wish it was <laughs> that yeah. easy. It's not like posting on Instagram. Yeah. Post it on Netflix. <laughs> but we don't currently, currently have a deal with Netflix. Uh, they've expressed some interest, but posting, tagging them, and letting them know that you want to see it on Netflix is probably the best way to I mean, let Netflix them know is, that. I mean, Netflix would be an example of probably one of the most pro-drag media places. Uh-huh. I was told that they don't think that their drag content performs that well if it's not Drag Race. You have a very special fan base of a lot of young women who do show up and will pay. Yeah. And I don't think that every queen has that. So I think that that's very special to you. And hopefully, you know, for this project. But and also that's based on who knows what, like, what are their other projects that right. they're talking about? You know I mean? I mean, it the depends on against, what it is. Uh, well, uh, and also compared against Drag Race, what does compare, right. uh, compare well, to Drag like Race? Well, it's like the new Trixie and Katya show, Queens Who Watch, we just got, you know, over 100,000 in the views in the first day. Yeah, congratulations so it depends on that, who by you the are. Way. Oh my God, have you seen it? It's so funny. I have it's to hilarious. watch it. I have so watched funny. it. It's so funny. It made me want to watch The Crown. I was like almost ready to watch The Crown. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I... I've been doing drag a long time. That was top three funniest days of my life. Yeah. We were scream crying. (laughs) We were laughing like when you are sitting, you're pushing each other away from each other laughing. Uh Uh-huh, right. It was so funny. And Netflix let us do and say whatever. Because we were like, I'll I'll just spoiler alert, one of the movies coming up is almost like a Hallmark Lifetime movie. Mm -hmm. And so we were like, you guys, we can't sincerely like- (laughs) Endorse this. Like, this looks really good. And they were like, you know what? Enjoy it in whatever way you want. If that means you guys, you know, rip on it, just make like do what you would do with it. Right. Which was great. That is great. It's very smart of them. Yeah. But I mean, Netflix is pretty into drag content, but it's not saying we'll never go there. But I I mean, I would love to see it on Netflix at some point. Because that means more people see it. But for us, we want people to be able to buy it, it, get it fast. It will be available worldwide. so uh, one of the most expensive parts of releasing films internationally is paying for the the, the language fees, uh, which is tricky. But if you want to watch moving parts, it will be available all over the world on Vimeo. So I figured that out. Oh, that's good. So language fees being the dubbing? Yeah, a lot of people were like, well, it's not available in my country, so I'm going to pirate it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Please don't pirate the film. No, it's don't. It's made by a very... Th- th- few people and for we've spent a lot people of people are like that all the time like for touring when i announced tours yeah people are like 
um, every time you don't come to Uganda, it feels like you're slapping me in the face. I'm like, okay, well, I'm coming everywhere else. Well, like, if you're in Uganda and you want to watch moving parts, go on Vimeo. Yeah. yeah. If you can't get to the, to the it's tour. in English, but um, yeah. subtitles. Yeah, yeah. You're all, uh, you're all Kelly Mantles on work the world tour and we're so oh my Poland. god that was the funniest <laughs> thing i've ever heard when we were uh, we, you were there too adam tammy brown's oh uh, that's right gala. do you remember her, do you, her gala jack, jackie goes um because um kelly was doing her character yes and jackie goes, Browns. sheila sheila yeah. and jackie goes where's kelly <laughs> sheila kelly mantle goes kelly's on a work the world tour in warsaw poland <laughs> and me and david like fell it's the down. funniest thing i've ever heard and i'll work the world tour because those hooker, poland those hookers do go everywhere everywhere like, yeah we have a fabulous show tonight in iran like they will go anywhere <laughs> that was a fun night the tammy brown 20th oh, so oh my god one of my favorites karen from finance was there it was me and david's three-year anniversary oh that's we right went to exotic long beach yeah, yeah. for a three-year anniversary we went to long beach to celebrate with tammy <laughs> uh that was a great night then we went after the bar with uh, that very Barbie famous gentleman. Yeah, Bill. Bill Greening. Yeah, yeah lovely man. <sighs> yeah. Oh. And Karen, who we love. Oh, Karen's fabulous. Yeah. I had a, a lovely time in London with Karen because Karen was doing a. She was on the this, comedy tour. Yeah. yeah and yeah. so we hung out for a couple days and then uh, we went to Long Beach together, actually. She's awesome. She's my drinking buddy from Australia. When we were on <laughs> the Australian leg of the tour, it would just be me and Karen I would, cracking open I a bottle of wine. I don't drink before the show. Right. So I would get done with the show and I'd be like, I'm ready for my glass of wine. Yeah. <laughs> Two empty bottles. Well, the, yeah, the real reason I go on tour is because the green rooms are always stocked with wine. Yeah. <laughs> so I always have a free bottle of wine. Yeah. Yeah. And Karen was there <laughs> drinking right, right with me. Yeah. Karen loves a good time. Yeah, that, I love having that you that was love her. her. Um, Bill was there, and Jackie was there. Milk. Bill's like, oh Bill, yeah, milk. Bill yeah. Greening is like the Jeremy Scott of Barbie world. I see. Okay. He's like Beyonce to us. Okay, gotcha. Um, who else was there? Um, milk was there. Yeah, milk was there. Um, there was a very like uh, who's who. So neat. Star studded event. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations, Tammy, on 20 years. We yes. love Tammy. Congratulations. We Complete wait, icon. So there were like a few dates of Super Bowl cut. It mm -hmm. was the Super Bowl cut. And we were in New Jersey at a budget inn with Tammy Brown. She was your opener. And she is a riot. No, was it New Jersey? What was it? It was, no, it was Jersey. Wasn't it called like Hollowbrook or something? I think it was New Jersey. We were somewhere on the East Hamilton, Coast. Hamilton, New Jersey. Hamilton, New Jersey, yeah. Oh, the legendary Hamilton, yeah. It's so funny because I'm staring at the Stasi book and she was just on this book tour and I was watching her on Instagram at these like beautiful suites, beautiful <laughs> hotels. And then we have the most famous drag queen on the planet at a budget inn. <laughs> you know what it was? Because Hamilton is very rural. And so okay. they were like, hey, for a nicer hotel, you're going to have to go all the way to Philly or whatever. We should have. <laughs> or you can stay in Hamilton at somewhere kind of creepy. And I was like, that's fine. It's closer and, you know, very practical. Whenever I say, like, let's just do that. I was just in in Seattle, staying in, like, rural Seattle um, by a studio. And they were like, do you want to stay by the studio? I was like, yeah, I'd rather just stay by the studio. It was in a day's end that shared a parking lot with an A&W. <laughs> and I was like, this is incredible. Did you get some A&W, though? I sure fucking did. Yeah, because what's your favorite A&W meal? I love an A&W. Bitch. Bitch. Root beer float with cheese curds. Oh. It's over. That's all yeah. you need. Yeah. Although, what are they? The mama and papa burgers or something? They have like the... I'm a vegetarian. Oh, I keep forgetting that. That's right. But I'm glad you allowed yourself to have the cheese curds. Well, A&W is so great because it's one of the only places you can get... Um, good vegetarian fast food oh okay what are some of the other places veggie grill in la uh-huh which well, is what about on the road though um i mean subway's good internationally like mcdonald's and burger king would have uh veggie, veggie burgers burger, that like, burger king. like oh, in yeah. the uk and australia i know the impossible burger yeah that's blown up yeah mm -hmm. yeah but we took tammy on uh i had three dates of a show i wrote called super bowl cut and um tammy brown opened and um we took her on she's always she's my so default great. opener when i have to go somewhere and they're like we need an opener she is so good to work with and so professional and perfect and beautiful and she whips that crowd up so fast they love her well at that budget in she was she was picking up the phone with the tissue paper she didn't want to touch the telephone <laughs> she was like my room smells i need to request an another room i'm like we're at the budget and they all smell <laughs> and then we went and saw the new halloween movie with jamie lee and uh Judy Greer, who came and saw our film at Tribeca and oh, loved fun. it. Judy Greer saw our movie. Yeah, that's, I Judy love Greer, that. uh, Margaret Cho saw the movie. Tatiana Maslany saw the movie. Mm -hmm. We have a few celebrity 
fans of the film. Tatiana Maslany is a big fan. She of is. Yours. She yeah. loves Trixie and Katya. We posted uh, Queens Who Like to Watch, and she commented like three times, "Oh my god!" And then like all face, all like smiley faces, and then she Emmy loves winning it. actress of Orphan Black. She's incredible. She's fed, well, yeah, let's say hi to her because she listens to the show. Hi, we hi. love you, uh. Tatiana. Please do a movie club sometime. Yeah, movie club. Yeah, well, yeah. We. I love her. I loved that show. Maybe and, we'll get uh, to do a Queens Who Like to Watch of one of her pieces. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah, she's an incredible actress, but uh, meeting Judy Greer at Tribeca was really cool. She was literally the nicest person I've ever met, was mm-hmm. so kind, loved the film. Um, and then, you like, know I, not she, for Jawbreaker, so. <laughs> oh, sure. Oh, of course. she, she yeah. let us kind of like grill her. Flip, flip and out on she's, yeah. she spoiled for us before it was announced that they were making uh, the, the sequels. Oh, that's, they are. That's the moment David was in love with me when I'm one of our first dates, because David's a movie person. He said, what's your yeah. favorite movies? And you I'm glad we're getting back to this because I wanted Kill to find Bill, out some more. You said Jawbreaker, and Clueless. All greats. Love them all. Mm-hmm. What's not to like? Yeah. Yeah. My favorite film is Sunset Boulevard. I don't think you've ever seen it. <laughs> and sadly, I wasn't able to go to that screening I at wasn't New Beverly. either. I just I played at New Beverly. Um, but Scream is actually the movie that made me want to make movies. Yeah. So tell us about that for those who didn't hear the Scream movie club. I'm 30 and David's 33. That movie came out when we were pretty young, like mm-hmm. 10. I wasn't allowed to watch scary movies. I would think I was 11. Scream was so fucking scary. <laughs> that opening scene was the scaredest I'd ever been from a movie at the time. <gasps> Horrified. Yeah. I so want to know scary. who I'm looking at. Oh my God. Holy shit. Oh my God. Your heart and stops. I was too young to know that a movie like that when I was young, was too young to know that it was sort of like referencing horror tropes and, and making fun of itself. But as a plain fucking horror movie yeah it was so scary well we love i mean like i said we spent a lot of time watching horror movies and that movie well like suspiria the opening with drew barrymore is kind of influenced by suspiria so like i was 11 and i was like reading all these references immediately went to blockbuster rent suspiria sure like just yeah. dug into horror movies we were uh-huh. very supportive of the film industry when a when a horror movie comes out we Always go see it. We just it. saw Doctor Sleep and I thought it was great. Loved it. Bombed at the box office, but it did. I loved it. I didn't know it. that. Oh, it's so good. Okay, I have to see that. You know, I'm still behind though. I haven't seen Hereditary. I haven't oh. seen Mid Sumner. You see oh, it? Uh, Her- no. Her- Hereditary was <laughs> the look of disgust in your face. There, was... I I read it and or I saw it. Now I'm reading it. I'm, I've been very busy uh, getting infections and things. <laughs> Midsummer was nuts. Hereditary was, was nuts. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When I saw Midsummer, I left there going. Kachi's gonna love this movie. Oh, that is yeah, so and you her. were so right. You were that so is right. So her and Kachi still disgusted that I have not seen the new Suspiria, which is not new anymore. Awful! It's a piece of shit. Really, I hated it. Okay, but well. also very Katya. Yeah, it's like dancers and witchcraft yeah. and shit. That is so her. Except I, it's too long for her. It was way she too won't long. Go see, she won't go see Doctor Sleep because she said it's too long. Are you kidding? She liked the Suspiria though. Loved it. Loved it. Let's not, not try not to good. act like her brain has patterns or. <laughs> <laughs> Though you do see um, Tilda Swinton wearing a prosthetic penis. Maybe that's what sold she her She plays a man. Well, she plays a few characters in it. Yeah, three different characters. One of them's... Uh, yeah, a, a male. Yeah. Um, that's not a great film. I just saw her in a weird movie. Uh-huh. She's in, Sometimes oh, the Dead she's Don't Die. Only Oh, The Dead Don't Die. The Dead Don't Die. Die. She's Jim in a Jarmish couple weird zombie movies. Movie. Okay. We watched that. That wasn't great. I no. heard not great things yeah, about it, that. It was yeah. so weird. Very Jim Jarmish, though, mm. if you are a fan. Mm-hmm. I like some a of his A few funny films. moments. I mean, yeah. Bill Murray, obviously, is iconic, but... Yeah. There were some, like, meta references that they were in a movie, which was weird to me. Yeah. I'm trying to think of the last movie I saw, and it was a Joan Crawford film at New Beverly about a uh, circus called Berserk. Ooh. Yeah, it was, it was pretty good. Um, we love her. And there was some queens living it up behind us. Oh, I'm so, sure. Oh, it was, yeah, that was quite good. Yeah. Um, we just recently rewatched uh, Mommy Dearest. Awesome. Oh, it's so great. And you could not understand why people, like, why she hates it so much, and it ruined her career. It's really hard for me because the the infrastructure and the trusses built in my body are so gay <laughs> that that movie does not read as somebody going too far. Oh, if right, anything, right. If anything, I, I read something where she said that she blames the director because it's their job to tell someone when they're, they need to reel it in. Yeah. To me, I'm like, you just, that is Joan Crawford to me. It's pitch perfect, I think. Ugh. It's amazing. To me, feud, that Joan Crawford ain't shit compared to the other Joan Crawford uh-huh. that we all know. To me, it was like, it's, it's, I mean, I don't know what the real Joan Crawford's like. 
when are they going to do the um, <laughs> High Point Coffee? I want to see a movie about her. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. I would love to see a movie about her. Specifically that Lauren era. Lauren McCall. Yeah, Lauren yes. McCall. Yeah. yeah. Her like, I got a new deal, but it's for commercials. I don't know about commercials. Yeah, she just did. I just heard some commercial about him. Yeah, some like insurance commercial she's in. You have to see this movie called Health that she's in. It's a Robert Altman movie where it's sort of a, a satire on the political system, but it's about health food. Um, what year? It's eighty eighty one. Never came out on home video, oh, wow. uh, but I have it, so I'll send it to you. James Garner, Carol Burnett. It was played on oh, cable wow. a few times, okay. and I stayed up late to tape it once. You know what Craig would that. like? Wow. Um, Final Girls. Yeah. Have you seen the Final Girls? No, I haven't. Oh, you should watch the Final Girls. Okay. Is that like about the horror movie trope of? It's a movie where there's this young girl, and her mother was a scream queen in the eighties, and her mom died. So she goes to like a 20th anniversary screening of her mom's famous like Friday the 13th style movie. Sure. There's a fire in the theater and she gets, her and her friends get sucked into the movie. Oh, okay. So to I love survive, stuff like that. To survive like a Friday the 13th, they have to sort of like use their knowledge of horror movies to like, every time and somebody like does a strip tease, they die. the character and like she's like meeting her mom again for the first time, but her mom doesn't know that that's yeah. her daughter. Oh, because in the movie, in her the mom's movie. a teen, like her age. So she's like shook. I yeah. love horror movies that uh, have that aspect of the movie theater in it. Yeah, yeah. It. like demons and mm. also uh did you ever see anguish no oh you'd like anguish quite a Craig, bit you ever see movies people see <laughs> uh not lately no no, no, no. <laughs> craig's not like, lately you ever seen the skinny pancake it's a snuff <laughs> film from the 20s directed by uh the great grandfather of steven spielberg and they only showed it once yeah but i caught I a screen the skinny pancake <laughs> yeah you gotta check it out yeah. the sequel's not so good so i don't yeah. want to recommend that one but <laughs> the skinny the skinny pancake gets bad I did. Yeah, the, fat oh, the other movie I watched recently was Skate Town USA. Patrick Swayze plays the leader of this tough roller skate gang. Work. Yeah, oh. and it's quite good. He does some amazing dance sequences in it on skates. Yeah, he rolls. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'll show you a couple clips from it. It's not worth watching the whole movie. It's a little <laughs> bit of a disaster. I honestly think in the three years of dating, we've seen... Oh, so many movies. So many horror movies. We'll watch... Yeah. We are a great horror movie audience because we will pretty much give at least a good review to any bad horror movie... Yeah. We're very forgiving. Well, a bad horror movies. You're its more forgiving thing. than I am. But so yeah. when okay. something's bad, it's bad to us. It's bad. I saw a fun one the other day at New Beverly, and I, I'm blanking on the name of it. I'm gonna have to look it up. It was played as a triple feature of Clue Gallagher films. So oh, yeah. it also had Nightmare on Elm Street two, which so I hadn't gay. seen. It. Yeah, it, re it really is, and I hadn't seen that since it came out on VHS. Oh, girl, you got to watch this documentary called Scream Queen. I know, I really do, and I want to get them on the show. You they should. messaged me about yeah. it, but I think I don't know. We got the communications got cro uh, wires they were crossed. Playing at a few of the festivals we were at. Yeah, when you two started um, moving from going on dates to like hanging out watching horror movies, how long was that from when you first met? Very quickly. Well, like we went on a date. Then you, it was like around Halloween time. You had a lot of. It's like you know. We went on like gay one Christmas, date, and then I was gone for a two week tour for Halloween. Yeah, yeah, we went on a second date, and I took you to the Groundlings for their Halloween show. Yeah, and then by their third date, we had already like between the second and third date hung out a few times. <laughs> I think I picked you up from the airport, and we like spent a few days together. And then our third official date was. Uh, election night when Trump won, we went and saw um, Hedwig. Hedwig. Oh wow! At the Pantages with Darren, with Chris, Darren Chris. Mm -hmm. and we got out of the show, and, and Trump had won. So it was a celebratory night, all right. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but that, and then I it, we, just very quickly, like we uh, were hanging out all the time. Have you ever heard the story of uh, election night? It was like Peaches Christ, Bendel Lacram, and Tammy Brown. No, I haven't and heard like this. everybody was crying, and Tammy Brown was like, well, "What about the whales?" <laughs> well the whales palm oil and the orangutans no, tammy was like i know this but it gets worse i'm gonna tell you about the whales uh-huh that's I good so that. she, she brought the mood up yeah. in the room oh totally yeah. so yeah. then you moved on pretty quickly to hanging out and sort of informal were you dressing up on the dates and then when does that stop <laughs> <laughs> well the first we time were. david saw me in drag because you know when you first start dating someone, it's you don't really know when you're a drag queen what it's like or what it's going to be like or if they're going to find out and be weird about it. or Yeah, sure. And, David, and did you have that before with people getting weird about it? Well, I didn't know David at the time, but he's seen every reality show. Oh, right. So I, right. Had, no, I had no choice. Well, also, I had yeah, no chance. I had seen Drag Race. <laughs> um, it's funny. Actually, Nick, the director, told me to watch Drag Race when we were in college. Um which was a funny connection, but I'd obviously seen him on Drag Race. I don't trust, you know, when you're dating and you're on those apps and there's those gay men who are like, 
I'm not into Britney or Gaga or Drag Race. And you're like, yeah. Oh, okay. Don't tell me what you're not into. Tell me what you actually do like. Yeah. That's I don't a, like. I don't a like weird way to present yourself. It is very negative. Yeah. So I also don't trust gay men that are like that. I'm like, you mm-hmm. know, we like a little bit of faggotry. <laughs> um, but the yeah, I mean, the first time I saw you in drag, you came and uh, met me at a uh, at Spotlight. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Thinking you, back, that was so funny. Meeting at Spotlight no, is very. I, yeah. I have to say this. I'm not saying I'm famous. I have raised my profile enough that it is weird to think that three years ago I willingly went and dragged to a warehouse party. A you, went to spot, you went to Spotlight in drag. Yes. So, so let's explain Spotlight well, so, for folks who don't know well, what that it's is. It's a gay warehouse party. It's, not it's, that it's, it's not a great party. It's a great party. party. But I would never choose to go there and drag because you couldn't live your life for five seconds. It was funny because I was downtown with my friends at Spotlight. You were hosting the Grinder Christmas party. Yes. Downtown. So you were already in drag, and I was already downtown. By the way, I'm reading gay people for Grinder. Meanwhile, I'm hosting the Christmas party. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, and you came straight from the party, and you met me and my friends at Spotlight. And that was the first time I saw you in drag. And you were dressed as like an angel. You had wings on. Yeah. My friend ruined your Mac uh, out of uh, production yeah. lipstick. That's an interesting place to go in drag because the bathroom situation. It was so dark and, and honestly, so dark and druggy. Yeah. That I actually was kind of anonymous. And also, the few people who came up to me, I'll never forget. They were like, I can't believe you're here. And I was, <laughs> which is people's way of saying, like, I thought you were more famous than you are. Or I thought you did not. better things with your time yes. than things I do. Yeah. But it was fun. And we had just started dating and I was downtown by them. So I was like, I'll come meet them. Well, it's also whatever. Like, it is. I don't know. I've never really been like a circuit party. Is it considered a circuit party? I think it is. I, I was too well, naive at the time, but it was it's like, like a drugs and house music party. Hot you, yeah. gay men. So I think like no one's coming there in drag. So R- seeing right, someone right. there in drag was a little, I think people like, what are you doing here in drag? Yeah. And this was also three years ago. It was before. Uh, really had a, a stride. It was before All Stars. It was, you know. Yeah. Like, yeah. It was at the beginning of your rise, your huge rise to fame. We have a pretty, I don't want to say boring, but like normal. Regular. Regular. Yeah. Regular. Human, human Real regular. Yeah. Relationship. And I think part of the success of it is I don't post a lot of pictures of him. I don't talk about him a lot. Mm-hmm. I put him in my act, but even then, every time he's in jokes. Yeah. He's only, he likes to talk to talk about me when it's in his show and it's about my, uh, erection yeah sure and that's a that's a good topic to yeah. focus yeah. on and also it's through the lens of trixie as you said in the film well trixie's never the good person in a in a situation <laughs> so usually when i tell a joke about david he's the upstanding person in the, the, sure. in the relationship yeah and i'm the garbage right you're not telling jokes like oh my god my boyfriend Ugh. no it's like here's how the right person would handle it, and here's how I handle it. Sure, you know, yeah, it's a nice spin on it, but it's sure, true. But sure, <laughs> like I used to have this joke about David's, um, like, uh, basically, I had this not joke, story joke about how, like, you know, I'm getting older, my erection's not the same as it used to be, right? But David kind of defies that rule. He's like, <laughs> you know, ready, ready. I'm the straight girl at the party. What was tell the joke? I said that uh, um, my boyfriend's dick is hard before, during, and even way after sex. His dick is still porn star erect the entire event. I was like, his dick is like you're having a house party and everybody went home, but there's that one girl sitting at the end of your bed drinking a PBR, saying, "Should I get bangs?" <laughs> That's right. Yeah, meaning like he can get hard and stay hard however long you want. Uh huh. And, and he's ready know, to go. Getting older, it's like not the same as being eighteen. So like in the joke, he's the example ideal, of uh, yeah. and I'm an the shit ideal face. erection. Yeah, what did my mom say after she heard that joke? She was like, "She well, said she was proud of you." Yeah, pr- pr- I'm proud of you. <laughs> That's yeah. very sweet. Yeah, I was mortified. Yeah. Did either of you ever uh, take Viagra? No, I haven't. There's a bunch in the new. If you just heard, I have a very well, healthy erection. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't know if you played around with it to see if you could, uh, you know, achieve that uh, potentially deadly yeah. erection. Yeah. There's some jokes, more jokes about our sex life in Skinny Legend, um, and then in movie in uh, Grown Up, the new tour. There's definitely more, whether he likes it or not. But I've been with David so long. That's what I have to draw from is this relationship right. and this. So right, he's very private until it's a joke about my privates. <laughs> but I don't have much of a personal life, mm-hmm. so this is this most is, of my personal this is life. The best you're like that's get. what I have to draw from. <laughs> and yeah. my drag, like my work, isn't at all like. Can't you talk know. about, gee, you know, the flight was real long today. That's right. not really your kind of material. I just flew into town, and boy, am I sick of putting on wigs. If you haven't seen Trixie on tour, I will say when we first started dating, I think I met you in Seattle for Ages 3 and Up. Yeah, it was when I was doing Ages 3 and Up, which was my the first, first show. The first show. Mm-hmm. And I 
was a little nervous because I was like, what if it sucks? <laughs> that is a concern. <laughs> And so it, it was like a two or three night, like you were there for a few nights. And I, the first night I was by myself and I laughed so hard. It was so funny. Oh, good. Um, and I, I had a friend in Seattle. I was like, oh, if it's good, I'll invite him the second night. And so he <laughs> came with me the second night because I was truly so impressed. And if you haven't seen uh, Trixie on tour, you should uh, buy tickets to Grown Up. Yeah, buy tickets to Grown Up and then invite your friends and cousins. It, like, yeah. I, David is really sweet. He will watch the shows and I can usually see him laughing. No night. one's seen your shows more than I have. I've, a million times. Yeah. And you still yeah. laugh. I will still laugh every time it's yeah. truly so funny he's David's so talented. also really good too because if i don't do a good job he's pretty honest about mm -hmm. it he'll be like it wasn't your best night okay yeah um but i always laugh i always make jokes because david's favorite drag queen is jinx so like the pressure's off for me because i know <laughs> i'll i'll never equate to oh sure david sure. watching jinx david is like tears streaming uh -huh. heaving we went to see jinx and ben's christmas show last year mm -hmm. which i'm sure is great this year oh, i'm sure yeah we're going we're going this year yeah it's david here, right? was yeah we yeah you were there last year too i wasn't actually no but i want to go this year and if david is superman jinx is there. like the kryptonite david just is puddles crying laughing uh, jinx and ben together the christmas show is truly oh my magic God. um i told them if you did this show year round yeah. i would go see this yeah. anytime, christmas show yeah. anytime yeah i don't care but yeah, it was jinx so funny is, is, um, well that was when i first i guess got into drag race was her season so i do like she's the sure. best and then seeing her alive i mean you, you should can have be them a, on the pod I, a, I would love to have jinx could you, you know, help me get connect? jinx and ben if yes. you could help me connect ben and i were in discussions but i think ben was traveling a great deal at the time we just missed each other in new york i think we're in new york at the same so time for like two hours oh my god they're so good. Yeah, um, I would love to have Jinx and Ben. They are on. both the like, but Jinx's shows with major scales. Um, oh my god! In P Town every summer, I'll come and uh, hang out in P Town while you're doing your shows, and you know, ev the best drag queens in the world are in P Town during the summer. Truly, doing yeah. their shows. Yeah, and Jinx's shows are so fucking funny. Oh my god! The f and also the Jinx, singing, the t the comedic the singing, timing, everything. Just she's brilliant. It's like a flagrant, like flaunting of. Talent. talent it's uh -huh, is. sure she's a disgusting funniest. display it really is the, yeah. she looks Offensive. beautiful the funniest the best singer and major skills writes her the best music yeah and her albums are amazing oh my god she is i could you know and ben is like embarrassingly good at drag mm -hmm. her show last summer in p-town inferno a go, go was like mind-blowing yeah. it was like the character she was doing there was puppetry uh yeah i mean they're both excellent and their christmas show is mine well i'll have to get uh, a ticket to that and we'll, we should all go yeah yeah oh, that'd be fun the, the best the best i guess i've seen you so many times at the ricardo montalban theater <laughs> that i That's thought right. you were there because <laughs> i remember running into you and devin at some show was it uh Troop it, beverly hills and i think it was Troop beverly hills that's right that and then also that was so fun uh, that Troop beverly hills was the best and then we also ran into each other again at the taping for oh, skinny legend yes yeah. oh yeah. yes yeah, yeah, where I was horrified to discover that all those voiceover bits I did were removed from the show. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, you didn't. Yeah, they wouldn't play in LA. That's oh yeah, the thing. those were for Australia because it was a Margot Robbie joke. Those were so fun. Yeah. Though. Well, no, they were only in there because of costume changes and stuff. Right, right. Oh yeah, and you weren't doing. And that. I had a normal intermission during the show, so. Oh uh, well, you know what's funny about that? I happened to have gone to the New Beverly that night, but I was so tired I couldn't enjoy seeing Godfather Part Two. You know when you haven't seen a movie in a long time and you really want to enjoy it, yeah. but you're just like I'm wasted. So I came back home and that's when I got your text and it was so funny because I said, okay, great. Like, when do you need these by? I was thinking like end of the week and you're like, well, we go on stage in about four hours. <laughs> Truly, that's how everything's done. Yeah, but I love that. That's why I've, I've, I, need I sent four you, hours. I sent you the message. If you need anything for this tour, can I remind you that I was at a makeup lab doing my eyeshadow with diarrhea? <laughs> no, listen, <laughs> I know. I'm not saying it was a strain for me. I'm just saying I thought it was really funny and I, I liked the challenge of like, yeah, I'll whip these together now. They were great. Oh, I love them. And yeah. I just, I'm happy. I, when, the point of the story is I'm happy I left the theater when I did because I wouldn't have gotten the message in yeah. time. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending tonight's showing of the 2002 film, The Country Bears. Please silence your devices and welcome to the stage, weighing in at 11 pounds, the skinny legend herself, Trixie Mattel. In the film, also, we see you moving houses, and you've moved house again since then. Yeah. Um, yeah, I live um, I live in Hollywood. I have a condo. Ooh. I bought a home. So pink. There's it is. Barbies everywhere. Mm -hmm. Wall to wall, pink paint everywhere. Um, white, gold, and pink furniture. There, how many Barbies in my house? 
So many. Hundreds. I will say we were on tour for moving parts and we would go to town to town in the US leg and we would stop. I like action figures. I had a lot when I was a kid and we would go into these toy stores and I'd leave with like a Star Wars or like an old action figure and you would leave with the Barbie and you weren't collecting them yet. And I started collecting these action figures and you've really taken it to now new we, heights. we both have new like heights. <laughs> and also new lows. My, my apartment, there's action figures everywhere. Your apartment, there was Barbies everywhere. Yeah, uh, we've both really just like went whole hog. People, people oh, yeah. walk in and see like one shelf. I have one shelf in my dining room that's like, I don't know, there's maybe thirty dolls on the shelf. Uh huh. And people are like, "Whoa, that's so many!" And I'm like, "Oh, bitch." Oh, you don't know. I bring them in my room, and then my bedroom has like probably seventy five in my bedroom. Wow. On shelves, how many do you think you have total? It's hard to say because then I have a closet of. <laughs> I like showing people the closet because they are a lot on display. It's shocking. But there's a closet just stacked full of boxes. Wow. It's okay. shocking. Well, so like last year for Hanukkah, we were talking about this. Um, During the drink break. Yeah. I Well, Hanukkah, you get eight gifts. So I, he never celebrated Hanukkah with me. So I got him eight gifts. And they were all kind of like toys you would have gotten if you were a kid celebrating Hanukkah. Sure. Yeah. So I got you like a Polly Pocket Mansion. I got you a Barbie makeup box and then i well you need eight gifts so i got you five of the spice girls dolls so that oh, took care of a lot of them that's yeah. sweet so they're in the closet the josie and the pussycat dolls are my favorite yeah i have a lot josie and the pussycats um do you like the josie and the pussycats film that's they're the, the dolls from the film so oh, it's like what? tara reed yeah, was tara Re yes. oh i have yeah. something for you then hold on we love that movie yeah it's a great movie parker posey brilliant here you go oh <gasps> what is it those are postcards that were made up for the new Beverly afternoon screening of Josie and the Pussycats. That's a great movie. Did famous people I love come? that movie. Yes. Yes, they did, actually. Tara Rosario Reed. Dawson come? No, I can't remember who. <laughs> oh, no, I'm mixing it up when Lisa Bonet showed up for Bugsy Malone. I don't Ooh. know who was there. Tara Reid didn't not, show up? No, not David, sadly. they showed now and then. Oh, I love now and then. They have some fabulous uh, matinees going on That's lately. A, um, the Josie and the Pussycats movie is great, but they did so make great. dolls of them, and uh, you have them. Yeah. I encourage you to buy those. So David got me five of the Spice Girl dolls. Um, yeah, but now this year I want the Spice Girls on tour collection. Oh, they have a new collection. Yeah. Well, no, there were there were a few sets. There's a few of them. iterations. Yeah, the yeah. on tour oh, okay. ones come with stuff Different they costumes. tour with. Yeah, yeah. So it comes like the posh one comes with fake nails, I or see. like the baby one I think comes with like um, lip gloss. Uh huh. But were um, you a fan of the Spice Girls? Yeah, I saw Spice World in the theater. Oh, great movie! Yeah. 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 What, what Spice Girl are you? Um, I'm not sure. I'll say Ginger. Oh, okay. Yeah, Loud Clothing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, um, that, that 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 tracks. I'm I'm posh, <laughs> obviously. Posh. Of course, yes. And you? I'm baby. Oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah that makes yeah. total sense. Yeah. I just got him a baby spice T-shirt. That's so cute. Now, do you have any favorite solo albums from the Spice Girls, or do you just like them as a group? As a group, I mean, oh, I kind of group, so grew out of them. By the time they broke up, I had kind of like grown out of You'd them. You'd had your fill. Yeah. Yeah. Were you excited about the reunion? Yeah, sure. But posh wasn't. I met. She's yeah, that's too, a, that's she's a problem. too posh for I it. I met yeah. Emma on. All stars. Oh yeah, and yeah. I met Mel B on season seven. So both times I was like having a hard. When July I remember five. when RuPaul was like our guest judge is Emma Bunton, I remember like falling out, <laughs> falling the fuck out. Yeah, and nobody knew her real name, so I was falling out. And everyone's like, "Who is that?" And I'm like, "It's maybe." <laughs> Did anyone else gag then, or were they just like, "Not oh. really"? I mean, yeah. I was dying, and mm -hmm. I remember Emma Bunton told me I was wearing those big white boots, and she was like, "Your boots have a lot of girl power." And I remember dying. Ooh. That's amazing. I mean, I told her, I was like, listen, I spent most of my youth pretending to be you and now most of my adulthood and I just love you so much. That would be a fun movie club, Space that, World. I was just thinking that. That'd be nice. You want to come it's back and do that? It's hard to find. It's not really it? available. Yeah. Well, that's something, you know, what we were talking about pirating. But in these instances, I will pirate it and put it up if, for Hot Dog if Club. If it's not available anywhere to find. I mean, you can't even, hardly find a DVD to buy. I was trying to buy one for Fina Barbatal, who's in the documentary. And Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, we love that movie. Another Bostonian. Yes, and I couldn't find a DVD to, to get. That's by the, shocking. By the way, they had editing problems with the movie because so many times Fina would say something poignant, but she dyes her hair so often <laughs> they couldn't cut her around because she colors her hair every two weeks. Oh, yeah. Her right. hair would be blue, her hair would be platinum. Yeah. Blue, pink, green, yeah. white. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. She's wearing a fabulous Rolling Stone shirt. But that's the real, the real star well. of the film. Yeah. The Fina. Hair. We love yeah. Fina. Fina's totally. great. Yeah, I want to have Fina you on You should sometime. have her on here. Yeah, I would like to. Yeah. She's got the stories. Oh, yeah. Sure. Fina has assisted Katya on tour, mm -hmm. me on tour, and has done drag for like 15 years. A long time. Yeah, yeah. I saw her plenty in Boston. Uh, I, hope, yeah. I hope to see her on Drag Race one day. Yeah, I'm not saying great. she's old, but she loves Madonna. 
<laughs> she nuts for Madonna. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, there could. We put- just watched her doing a Madonna number at Redline last weekend. Yeah, they footage could come out of Madonna snatching a kid off the street, and she'd be like, "Yeah, <laughs> that's how you do it." She'd be like, D- "Madonna deserves that kid." I wonder is she a Gaga fan or is she anti Gaga? She loves. Yeah. Okay, good. It's happy. Yeah. I'm happy to hear that. If it's baggy, Fina's into it. It really. She really is. <laughs> There are a lot of great cameos in the film, I will say. Yeah, that. there are. A lot of famous drag queens. RuPaul's in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Michelle's in it. Yeah, we shot at DragCon, which um, that was around when World of Wonder got involved because uh, you have, obviously, uh, they were like a lot of drag queens asked to film at DragCon. And they had... Um, but they, they don't let drag queens film at DragCon. Drag or DragQuan. 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 You know DragQuan. <laughs> but um, <laughs> they, they had known about the filming because we obviously were on the set of yeah. filming and um, they are they are part of the film now. And um, around then they started, they were like, basically, you know, make the movie and if it's good, we'll we'll take a look at it. And they loved it. Randy and Fenton. Uh, That's great. I want to have them on too. They're incredible. And they, um, I think people don't realize, you know, World of Wonder who produces Drag Race is run by Randy Barbado and Fenton Bailey. And they are prolific documentary filmmakers. Yeah, the new one for decades. Yeah, uh, they just released a documentary on HBO called uh, Stone Liberty uh, Mother of Exiles. They yeah. have a Stonewall doc that's I think on you can watch Eyes on YouTube. Eyes of Tammy, uh, Tammy Faye, Faye inside Deep Throat Party Monster. Yeah. I mean, w- we partnered with them. Obviously, the Drag Race connection is an easy one to make. But I, them as filmmakers, they've really been making incredible like zeitgeisty documentaries for a long time so it was a real honor for them to uh they also met at nyu Mm -hmm. and david and nick met at nyu right that was a weird connection meeting of the The four of us like grabbed breakfast in new york while they were making the liberty uh the statue of liberty documentary and they met at nyu and they were a couple for a long time and they thought nick and i were a couple they didn't realize that brian and i were actually a couple (laughs) that's how low-key you guys were keeping things yeah yeah um really yeah people don't know we're no, at Tribeca, like, Fenton, Fenton came to Tribeca and saw the film, and he was like, I didn't... Uh, and then afterwards, I had a, a call with him, and he was like, oh, I didn't realize you were a couple. I was like, <laughs> yeah, no, that's my my partner. Uh, you know, we talked a lot about the sort of regular aspect of your relationship yeah. and how you two get along really well, but every couple has fights, so I'm curious, what do fights look like when you guys have oh, fights? What do fights look like, right? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, in the three years, David, what do you think? Honestly, not more than five. No, no, like I was going to say three or four. So, real yeah. like um, barn re- burners. Yeah. Real like we're not talking for a day. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe five times tops. I would say three of those times it was maybe us a little boozed up, and then it's a small thing that becomes a big thing, and then the next day we're like, I'm still mad, but I don't remember why. <laughs> <laughs> but a few times it's been um, things like. We just, you know, like the love languages. Like we have different approaches to things. Sure, and what are those? I can be admittedly pretty self-involved and I get so like horse blinders on work. And what does that lead to? Does that lead to you neglecting certain aspects? Not spending enough time, Uh not paying attention enough to someone's feelings. Sure. Not really like reading the signals someone's sending until it's like too late. Stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I'm very sensitive and he's... uh... I'm like the, not the devil, but like very (laughs) pragmatic. Yeah. Yeah, Very very pragmatic. Very like feelings are just chemicals. Oh, okay. Yeah. And David um, is much more sensitive to, like, you know, anything like that. Yeah, I will, like, a few, like, months into dating, we took that, uh, the intimacy test, what's it called? We took an intimacy test. Okay. It's had a ton of questions. Well, then it's supposed to end with, like, five minutes of uninterrupted eye contact. We skipped that. We were at the Cheesecake Factory taking this test. (laughs) It's hard to at the Cheesecake Factory. But it was, like, it's, like, 40, it's, like, a a long list of questions, and, like, you ask each other, um, and then, like, your love languages and stuff like that. So, the, in terms of love languages, how would you typify each one of yours? Well, David's an Aries, mm-hmm. and I'm a Leo. You're a Virgo. A Virgo. He told me. He, he, <laughs> and the movie comes out on the seventh. He's or the on third. the day that's the cusp. So the he, spectrum. Oh, when, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's on the spectrum. When we met, you told me you were a Leo, and then it turns out you're actually a Virgo. Yeah. Oh, so you were being deceptive even then. <laughs> lies, yeah. full of lies. But uh, we just have different approaches to a lot of you know. Um, David has a lot more freedom with his time and I have a lot less. And sometimes we have like, you know, problems there because, you know, we don't see each other enough. And then on top of not seeing each other, I have a million things to do that only I can get done. Right. And it turns into like, honestly, it just, it's not about hours in the day. It, it usually is about priorities, like whether or not I am making my relationship a priority. And sometimes I'm, I'm not. 
Do you find it hard to turn your brain off when you have a lot of stuff going on and you always have a lot of stuff going on? Well, it's just like there is no alternative. Right. But so, I mean, also, um, do you ever have trouble getting to sleep at night? Do you ever have trouble? No. Oh, no. This bitch passes oh. out. Oh, I could fall asleep now. Yeah. <laughs> if you stop talking for 10 seconds, okay. I could start the REM cycle. Okay, sure. I'm the we one can... who can't sleep David at night. David tosses and turns. I wake up at night. David's in bed watching TV, watching videos on his phone, and I'm blackout asleep. Oh, you noticed that? <laughs> oh, yeah. Because <laughs> sometimes he, he can't fall asleep, and I know he doesn't want to wake me up. So he'll lay there like, I know he's awake, but I'm sleeping. Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. so quickly you fall asleep. It's uh, well, so impressive. I'll ask him a question. He'll go to answer, and I'm yeah, passed out. You know, uh, I have no problem sleeping. Yeah. And I, the, and the nerve of me, I even sometimes take those melatonin pills. Yeah, sure. Me on that melatonin. Oh, you're knocked out. Oh, my God. I could sleep on done, the floor. Done. I was curious. In London, were Brendan and I actually making a lot of noise to keep you up? Because you texted, like, keep it down. Or something. Yes. Okay. <laughs> you were. They had the room next to me. Oh, he told me. He, I, was, I already know. You told well, me. Well, I had to wake up in drag like four hours well, then. Yeah, but I was shocked that the hotel was so poorly soundproofed. And then I well, could hear the TV from downstairs. I could hear everything. Well, Brandon likes to be next to me for for Brandon likes to like know that if I need something, he's right there. Okay. But Brandon also likes to make the most of his travels. I see. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm like, I don't need to be wall adjacent. Okay, sure. You'd prefer maybe the two rooms away. I love being life of the party, but I got shit to do. Yeah, every you got day. stuff to do. I totally understood. I was more shocked. I had to make up. There's a YouTube video of me right now for my makeup channel of me and drag. It was six hours we filmed probably after the next morning. Okay, sure. So I slept and dragged that night. I do you remember that. Yes, I do remember slept that. Slept and dragged. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sleeping in drag in bed, and there's fags next door screaming. <laughs> that tracks. The drag queen had to text the peep, the normal people, can you guys keep it down? I, and I didn't even realize we were being that loud, so my apologies. But again, shocked that, that a very expensive seeming hotel would have such poor soundproofing. Yeah. Because I was staying at the Hoxton. And oh, I, was, I love the Hoxton. Hoxton is fucking yeah, great, no, isn't Hoxton's it? Hoxton's are great. I'm trying to do, work a deal with them where I either get a discount or free stay in order to mention them a bunch on the show. Oh, do it. I, yeah, that's There's what I'm working really on. a really nice one in Paris. Ooh, I'll have to check that out because I think I'm going to go back to Paris. I'm going to be taping a listener questions with fame. Oh, and nice. yeah, and then if Casey Spooner's there, uh, I'm the official news channel for the Spooner 2020 I presidential campaign. So we'll have to do some updates on that. But good to know about the Paris location. There's yeah. one in downtown LA right now. And see, Hoxton, if you're listening, and I'll send you this clip, I talk about you a lot. Make it work for me. So I, I was at the Hoxton. And as you know, the ground floor of the Hoxton is a vibey, buzzy yeah, kind of place. Yeah. And very Hip. loud. Yeah. Super, yeah. I, like I loved going from the shithole that I was originally booked at into the Hoxton. Yeah. And because I walked in and like either like LaRue or Grace Jones was playing. No, no, Chaz Jankel was playing. I was like, this is my place. I like this. But I was on the first floor right above where the hot spot was. Yeah. And I couldn't hear a goddamn thing. And I was so thankful. Also because I was playing the uh, Star is Born soundtrack, the Streisand one on the loop oh. on that trip. Yeah, it, I don't know. It just worked. It was my soundtrack. So anyway. That's what gave you anal gonorrhea. <laughs> <laughs> that gay I, ass soundtrack. I, I, the, the Gaga version would have done that. What, would it? Okay, so I got to be more careful yeah, when yeah, i get into that yeah, one yeah because yeah. you know because i haven't seen that yet but i'm going to be watching it uh, for I just rewatched it last like two nights ago i'm going to be doing that for movie club with willem oh coming right. up soon. the star of a star is born <laughs> exactly right yeah it's yeah. about willem's rise to fame yeah and we were talking about john crawford before going to be doing whatever happened to baby jane with <gasps> peaches christ uh, i'm taping that next month doing two with peaches that peaches. and heathers peaches is the best right oh my god heathers Heathers. Heathers. Yeah, Heathers. Peaches, Peaches rolls. So good. And I'm excited to see the new um, production that Peaches is doing in San Francisco, Femlins. Yes. With Cracker yes. and... Fifi uh, O'Hara, right? Yeah, yeah exactly mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Work. I'm excited yeah, for that. Fifi is the gremlin. We were trying to do Romy Michelle again, but it's just scheduling. It just is really hard. Yeah. Yeah, I would love to see that because I never got to see the one you guys oh, did. We were trying to bring it to LA because it's such an LA show. Yeah, it really is. Have you and seen we, Peaches's uh, horror film that she wrote and directed? Yes, I have. I loved it. All about evil. Natasha Leone. I Admittedly, mean, though, it's a little hard to find. Yeah, no, yeah, definitely. no, it is hard to find. You may have to pirate it, but if you have the option to buy it, Don't, buy it. Yeah, yeah. Try to support. Definitely. Peaches Christ is the best, and I'm looking forward to the next uh, LA show of Peaches. If you're stealing from Hollywood, no one cares. If you're stealing from independent filmmakers, you are garbage. Yeah, you're doing the, the devil's work and not the good kind. No. Yeah. Please don't pirate our movie. It's like when drag queens are like, you got some free makeup to fall off the back of a truck. I'm like, this ain't Revlon, bitch. Hey, right. How about this? Oh, I'd love one of your shirts. 
And I go, cool, then you should buy one because I don't have one. Thank you. You know, I think I have two of them and I had to pay for them. By the way, if you have any of that extra cosmetic sitting around. I'm just <laughs> blush. Now that you have anal gonorrhea, you're ready for blush. <laughs> I still can't believe that happened. That was so funny. Oh, it's so funny. Yeah, it's a special the moment timing, on the show. The timing was just so you know perfect. What the, it's the type of, honestly, it's the type of honesty that people will see in our movie. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Who did you think that was? Because you were like, is this John? Here's who I thought it was. So World of Wonder has some deal with some hotel that... Uh, they're block booking for DragCon UK. And I've been in touch with them about figuring, I said, do you have a partner hotel? Because I, you know, I'm doing DragCon UK. I'm doing a panel with Sophie Anderson and one with the Brit crew. So John from World of Wonder is figuring all that stuff out, but he's like in Portugal. And so he's had this really small window of time to do a, a call. And he said, can you talk at 5 PM tomorrow? This is yesterday. And I said, actually I have a taping then, but you know, yeah, let's yeah. figure it out. And that's why I said, is this John? Okay. And I, cause when they call back a second time, I thought, oh, this must be it's, John. Yeah. And then as soon as the guy started saying where he was from, I remembered the guy that I dealt with at the clinic who was lovely, who said, now listen, no news is good news. Right. So if we don't call right. you, nothing's if you wrong. If don't get the call, that's it's good. Right. I guess it's a good thing that that's on the show. I'm happy to share that. And yeah, then, everyone get tested. Yeah, everyone yeah. get tested. Yeah. And you know what? And the, do it on a podcast. It, yeah. yeah, make a podcast just to reveal your findings. Yeah. And I will report back to everyone about uh, after I get the uh, treatment and whether or not I ship myself and also when I'm back to sexing because that unfortunately right. I'm going to have to cancel Tuesday. And now also to remind everyone you can get testing for free because I talked on the show a while ago about the, when I paid for testing before I, I knew that you could get it for free, I paid way too much money and then got hit with hidden lab fees afterwards. They took so much blood they had to feed me juice, cookies. I mean, I was going through it. They tested you and found out that you haven't eaten in three days. <laughs> well, actually, I didn't eat properly that day. That's one thing. I remember in high school, I tried to give blood and you have to take that little. Did you try to give blood in high school? When you give blood in 2005 in Northeast Wisconsin, you have to fill out a little computer thing that's like, no, I've never done drugs. No, I've never whatever. I remember clicking that, yes, I had had homosexual oral sex. Yeah, you're not allowed to be And they took me in a room when I was 15. Oh, and they were like, that's right. They took me in a room when I was 15 and they're like, we can't take your blood. Yeah. And I remember bringing it. It was so dehumanizing. I think that's I was still so a thing. It too. is still a thing. That is so crazy. It is bananas. It's bananas. Gay people can't get blood. They test all the blood anyway. Exactly. What does it fucking matter? Then again, if I was dying and you said it's straight blood, I'd be like, let me go, boo. <laughs> you want the gay blood? I don't want the straight oh, blood. you don't want the straight no. blood? Yeah. No. Well, that's fair. I'd be, I'd be like, I'm fine. Anyway, let's listen to some Dane Cook. You know, like Dane Cook. I put on a Chevy Chase movie. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's really funny. Have you yeah. seen this guy? Yeah. I'm really, yeah. Yeah. I like to put on a Chevy Chase movie and dub it with Dane Cook stand up <laughs> and just drink a monster energy drink. Mm -hmm. Your material would get a little different, I think. Oh, yeah. Totally. We're getting close to wrapping up. It's been a wonderful afternoon slash evening with the two of you. And I was wondering if there's anything else we, we should talk about. No, I'm excited. I mean, I've been on this show, I think, four times, to three times. Fifteen times. That's right. Fifteen times. <laughs> and it, you just I love listening to you. I get starstruck every time. Oh, that's so adorable. Thank you. Yes. Well, the same goes for And now for that we finally got Katya out of here, I think the show's in a real upswing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Listen, I didn't want to reveal you were helping to behind the scenes to engineer all You're that. cutting the fat, really. <laughs> you know, trimming the non-essentials, downsizing. Well, listen, but now I have to take on the burden of getting the positive test results for gonorrhea. <laughs> I know. Uh, I may have to shit myself. I don't know. There's oh, a lot of things. When you get the gonorrhea shot, you were, you're going to shit yourself. I used to have an entire bit in one of my shows about Ages the gonorrhea shot, up, yeah. shot, making me shit myself, shit myself. Okay, great. So again, I'm going to have a very happy Thanksgiving. Maybe I'll Anybody have to be recording in a diaper. I <laughs> you're going to be crouched over a bucket being like, anyway, Miss Fame, this question's from uh, Chicken Lover 94. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> she's she roll, she'll roll with they that. They want to know: Do you ever tough. put face tape on a chicken? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just went to um, I just went to the American Influencer Awards, and uh, ooh, la di da. Yeah, I was with. Well, I was with. <laughs> shut up. Kim Kardashian was there, and so was Tyra Banks, and so was Trixie Mattel. So yes. this is what's happening in the world. I was with Tish and Snooki from uh, Manic Panic. Yeah, and um. They were like, yeah, we have face tape on. And it's so crazy to, that people just wear face tape. Yeah. Wow. I'm wearing some right RuPaul. now. I mean, normal people just do it mm -hmm. all the time. 
Yeah, you are. And uh, I think the look's going well. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. I just got uh, some advice on face cream from Miss Fame. I was very happy to, because uh, I, something, I don't, it might be the overly strong lights in the bathroom. They just replaced the lights in there and I have not yet replaced them with the hue lighting system that I've done in every other part of the room, the house, apartment, whatever you call it. And uh, it's a little severe. And then I was looking at it and I was like, is that what, well, you know, when am you do I that, an old? Yeah. Yeah. Am I, an, well, I, I am officially an old. I mean, I'm going to be turning 44 in February. So that's shocking. Uh, is it? Why, thank Thank you. Are you an Aquarius? I am an Aquarius. Uh -huh. Yeah. Hmm. So anyway, I needed a couple tips and I figured who better to ask than fame. She's got great skin. She does. And she well, knows all the stuffs. Although I love her. She always posts before and after so going to the dermatologist treatments. Yeah. She looks the same before and after. <laughs> it's the She's same She's beautiful picture. in both. Yeah. Yeah. She's like that one pore that you couldn't see. Well, now you really can't see it. <laughs> it's looks, gone. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> But um, well, well, thank you for having us. Well, thank, yeah, you. thank you so much for having thank us. Thank you both for uh, coming on and also revealing the intimate details of your relationship and filmmaking process. Yeah, if you yes. want to see moving parts, you can uh, you can buy it and you can download December it on December third. Yeah, on yeah. iTunes, a bunch of places, and then uh, I think we're releasing in like forty more countries the next week, and it'll be available worldwide on Vimeo. So please, yeah, support support the film and buy it. Yeah, because you know it's it's a real movie made by real people, not like a giant conglomerate. So when right. you when you buy it, the money really goes to the few of us who made it. So thank you very much. Yeah, definitely. You're supporting a young and upcoming filmmaker and and, and drag artiste. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Go check out patreoncom slash Craig and Friends. Join the hot dog club and be amongst Trixie and David. Still waiting on that hot dog. <laughs> well, well after the mics are off yeah but i mean we might have to wait now given my test results yeah i want a different hot dog than you got <laughs> <laughs> so uh, also you'll be coming back for another movie club in the near future for the scream two three and four films yeah and some other stuff possibly tommy possibly spice world the future is very bright mm -hmm. very bright all right well thanks so much gang and we'll talk to you soon bye